Yo, the podcast people listen to one and only legend of winning, aka hey, Low. On my left, I have my co host, Agent Zero. Say what up. Hey, man. Behind the producer desk, we got producer John. Okay, and, and we finally have a special guest on a special episode with a special set, Young Don. <laughs> Hey man, it's good to see you. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, it's good to have you on the podcast, man. I've been looking forward to this one. Yeah, me too. Hey, Definitely. okay. So please turn off this Sesame Street ass music. Shut the fuck up. to bump this. No, I've never in my life bumped this. I've never in my life bumped it. Hey, so you might have noticed the new podcast says shout out to the team, man. Did a fantastic job putting this together. You know, we went from bland and generic to you know, a little bit of... To collage. To, and, I mean, that's one way to look at it. I like to First grade homeroom? Unique. You know? Mm. Really like us. Oh. I see. I knew that. He's not. He's not wrong. You said I could write anything. Tell him that. <laughs> that is his message for the day. Well, Young Don is fantastic to have you on the podcast. Yeah, I'm really glad to be here. Thank y'all for having me out here. Thank y'all for, for sure. inviting me on the podcast. Um, today's been, like, super fun already. Oh, wow. And, yeah, I've been... Really looking forward to this. For sure, man. For yeah, sure, yeah. man. <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, we can get to all the details in a set at a later date, man. But I want to focus on you today, man. Um, you've been doing content for a while now. I, I first got put onto you years ago when you were doing animation. Yeah. Uh, now your content's changed. Uh, or you just diversified, I guess. So you do more than just one thing. <clears throat> yeah. How did, how did you start getting into content? Yeah. So I started off making animations about, you know, five years ago, five plus years ago. Uh, did that pretty consistently, pretty exclusively for about, you know, three, four years. There's three going on yeah. four years. Yeah. You know, um, grew up drawing, you know, and. Are you into art? Yeah. yeah. Like, that was my thing as a kid. I would draw all mm-hmm. the time, you know, and um, yeah, I saw that genre. I saw a space that I thought I could flourish in. And so mm-hmm. I gave it a shot, stuck with it and it worked out, you know. How long ago was this like when you first started Um, so this was about a little bit over five years ago and, uh, um, I dropped out of school with like a hundred subscribers. Good. Yeah. Yeah, We celebrate dropouts here. Yeah. Yeah. We all all dropped dropped out. out, Yeah. Yeah. That's the way to do it. For sure. That's the way to do it. What what were y'all in school for? Sport management. Sport management. Accounting, man. Last year, man. I graduated. I was like, ah, don't feel like it no more. That's crazy. Wait, John, what were you in school for? I was there. (laughs) (laughs) Business or something. (laughs) <laughs> not knowing your major <laughs> is crazy. Yeah, that's what crazy. Business, business, automotive, auto, what is He's, I think he went to you went to school for like two months, right? No, half a semester. That's no, two that's months. That's two months. No, about sixty days. That's two months. It's okay. It's about, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there it is. Quick man. Yeah. Uh-huh. You, you see how long I was there. But, <laughs> but like, <laughs> look where I'm at now. <laughs> so what, what right. convinced you to take the leap? Because you said at hundred subscribers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I did two, two or three, and I was like. Oh yeah, no, I'm, I think I'm good enough. Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like my videos were entertaining enough when I compared them to the other videos in the space. And so I was just, I just believed. And at this point in my life, I was super into like, you know, new age spirituality. So like manifestation and Mm -hmm. like, you know, um, you know, uh, all of that stuff. You feel me? Like putting stuff on vision boards and stuff. And so I just believed that if I just kept my mind fixated on it and if I just, became obsessed with it it would work out eventually and so like a year later you know everything blew up Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well it's fucking incredible you have that much confidence in yourself at 100 subscribers a lot of people doubt themselves they wait for like the results to give them the feedback that they're good enough but you just knew that no i really was bought into the secret Oh, the book? Yeah. Oh. Like, I was bought in, bro. Like, every day, (laughs) every day at some point, I would set aside time to, like, visualize, manifest, Mm -hmm. attract. You know what I mean? And so... Do you feel like it was effective? I believe that if you... The human brain is the most powerful supercomputer in the planet, and it's a problem-solving machine. Okay. And so if you put one problem in front of it every day, it is going to figure it out. That's mm-hmm. what I believe. So I don't attribute it to manifestation, like, because the Bible says that's really just a form of witchcraft, right? And also, there are other things that you can't manifest no matter how much you... Like, you can't manifest, you know, 
winning the lottery. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't manifest an NBA career if you're, you know, very short and like unathletic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or, or fat. fat. Like, no way he can manifest that at this state of body. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can't manifest it either. Yeah. But like, the point I'm making is oh. that, yeah, I think. <laughs> wow. <man. laughs> Jeez. Hey, we should not have given this sound. Play the last track after your own joke. It's crazy. It's the craziest thing in the world. Craziest thing. All right. All right. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, Lil, why you let him do it like that, bro? I I mean, I can make jokes, but then niggas will just say I'm a mean person. No, I got got all your Mm. jokes here. I got. I said I can. This is is like me saying. Is that a picture of his fucking car? Yeah. Because remember what Lil said? Unless you're a hypocrite. Looks don't matter. It's all about. What it do like? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The personality. Of yeah. It, yeah, yeah. You are, it's station, literally un, it's that's literally a, unsafe. You don't have a front headlight. It is right there. No, that's an old picture. No, it's not. Yeah. Oh, it you is. fixed it up? That's not it. Look at that. No, it's not. Look at that low. This that's my, that's that's him right doing. Here. That's literally him doing what he's telling him not mom. to do. I didn't know your car he had sense. He has no. a picture. He has a picture trying to manifest that he fixed it. Yo, no, no. Out. You should have a picture manifesting that you fixed something that you can't afford to fix. That's why you had it up there, bro. No, no, no. no. Where they do this a lot. They do this a lot. Oh, oh. Can you put my check up there? Okay. You All right, guys. <clears throat> oh, I had, I had something for that too. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good talk. Um. So. We were talking about something, I feel. As a yeah, so today. no, just the manifestation yeah, stuff. Yeah, manifestation. So, yeah, the point is, yeah, I became obsessed with it unlike anything else I've ever tried to pursue in my life. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just stuck with it. And then, I mean, if y'all can relate to it, you know, as creators, there comes a point where you've invested too much time and energy. For mm-hmm. sure. Especially after doing something like yeah. dropping out for you to turn back. It feels like I can't go back now. You, you know? lose all the time. Yeah, exactly. It's like, wow, I'm like, I just wasted, you know, six plus months or however long and all mm-hmm. that effort. And then, you know, now and you look like, you know, a loser now. You look like, like a, a clown. Fan. Yeah. You know, like all the people that you, oh, you dropping out to do this. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. so. Did you tell your mom or your dad? Oh, you yeah, yeah. They, they, they were not um, happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. They, were, For sure. For they sure. were not happy about it at all. But. Were, so, you, were you staying at their crib though? Like when you. No. No, oh. so my mom lives in Jamaica and my dad lives in New York and I was going to school in California because I was going to a JUCO. My whole, like, my whole, from the age of, like, 17 to, like, 23 was just me repeatedly, like, disappointing my parents just over and over again. Jeez. Or more like breaking their heart, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, boom, I did well in school in high school, mm-hmm. going to every university I, like, applied to told them yeah i want to turn all of these down to go play at a junior college in california to try and make it to go d1 in basketball because Mm -hmm. in high school i got like a couple d2 offers and mostly d3 and -hmm. i was like oh i want to go d1 so they're like oh go to juco so i telling my parents yeah i want to go to the nba right ultimately Mm -hmm. and you you know going d1 is like the pathway to that so i was like yeah i want to instead of going to university i want to go play basketball in mm. California. Mm. And so I did that. And then I redshirted the first year so I could just train and get my skills up with the coach. Cause that mm. was the thing I was athletic, but I had moved to America at 16. You feel oh, me? Wow. Yeah, yeah. And so like it, I needed to hone my skills more. You mm-hmm. feel me? And so I redshirted in that red shirt year I lost my um, passion for basketball. And it wasn't even really I lost my passion for basketball. When I was little, you know, growing up in a country like Jamaica, I just like, one day I want to be rich. Mm-hmm. I want to be rich. I want to have a big house. I want to be able to buy my mom a house. You know, I want to drive a nice car. And I just th- saw going to, becoming a professional athlete as a pathway to do it. to get there, yeah. And so what happened is I actually became enamored with um, uh, network marketing. What is that? You know, like pyramid schemes. Oh, MLMs. LMMs, yeah. Or LM, what? MLM. M- MLMs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Multi-level. So, yeah, so I had a friend who introduced me to it, and, like, he played me a video, and they're driving, like, Rolls Royces, the people, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they're driving, they're all young, they're vacationing in, in Hawaii, and then I was... 
What in the fuck is this? <laughs> Yo, Jesus Christ, bro. And then um, I saw it, and it was like, all you got to do is get three people to sign up. Mm -hmm. So I was like, bro, we're going to all be rich by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I dive into that. In diving into that, this is how I found the secret in manifestation. That The one saving grace or the one cool thing about that world that I think has some like worth to it is mm. they're very like s personal development self-help oriented like mm -hmm. you get into that world they're telling you to read you know how to win friends and influence people they're telling you read rich dad poor dad you know all of the like the you know um think grow rich. books yeah and like ones. you know even though like that kind of content and that kind of information does become like played out in cliche at a point when it's your first time being introduced it's to that. Crazy. Yeah. It's like the concept of being able to like, doesn't matter where you start with enough perseverance and like, you know, skill development, you can attain and achieve anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that was like, and it's like, oh, I don't need to go to the NBA to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I could do a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And so I apply that energy to network marketing, to pyramid scheme stuff. Only took me a few months to realize though that this is a scam. Yeah. Like it's a scam and it's also like, even if it wasn't a scam, it's like, I couldn't put, I couldn't see myself constantly putting energy and effort into something that I didn't care about. You know what I mean? It was just supposed to be a money-making machine. For sure. You know, but I didn't care about the energy drinks that they were like pushing or whatever it is for they sure, were doing. And so... For a while, I was kind of just like floating. It's like, oh, I realized that I wasn't that passionate about basketball. I just wanted to be rich. I realized the thing that opened my eyes to all the other ways I can make a lot of money, that thing's a scam. And so, you know, I started to lean back onto my creative side, playing around with YouTube. Eventually, I found animation. Mm -hmm. And then all of the things I have been learning, the drive, the all of that. I put it into that something mm. I was actually enjoying. Mm, okay. And so that's, that's how, but you can see how every time like get into universities, parents are like, yay. No, mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. Play basketball. They're like, all right, go to play basketball. They're like, all right, we believe in you. I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to do this no more. I want to do <laughs> network marketing. <Yeah. laughs> it's like, they're like, all right, as long as you don't drop out, you know, like just get your, as long as you're getting good grades, you still can like get your degrees and whatever. Hey, I kind of want to drop out because I want to do be YouTuber. And so like, you know, it just looked from the outside looking in, like I was just lost and grabbing at things and then giving up and not like that. Your parents were born and raised in Jamaica? Oh, yeah. So they're probably, yeah, there's a lot of Jamaicans in Toronto. They're, your parents seem pretty understanding, though. It's like surprising understanding because, I mean, you haven't. What are you understanding? I mean. They let him do it. No. Well, my dad was helping to take care of me financially. When I dropped okay. out of school, he uh, cut me off, like, financially. Oh, that's where he drew the line? Yeah. When I dropped out of school, he was like, yeah, you, if you want to make grown man decisions, you got to have grown man responsibility. Which is fair. Very fair. And yeah. it, it helped me, like. It was motivation. Mm -hmm. And then my mom, um, she never like cut me off emotionally or anything, but she was very like, she very frequently let me know that she thought I was making bad decisions. Bad decisions. Yeah. So. And I think, yeah, like that's what your parents are supposed to do. And like I think if you're really, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They're supposed, to make, they're supposed to help you make good decisions, bro. Oh, and good. No, help good. But yeah, the label yeah. of what he's doing is a bad because really it's not it, a traditional. Just so to see, make see you work. And then if you like, you need it. Yeah, I mean, but the point is most parents aren't, like, progressive enough to be like, oh, you're going to chase your dreams and you could drop out of school. They're going to be like, yo, we worked our ass out to put you in this position. Get oh, your fucking sure, degree sure. before, sure. you know what I'm saying? But you believed in a thing and you went for it. Only thing is when you do something like that, you kind of have to be right. Because um, being wrong, <laughs> you're going to have to look your parents in the eyes at, yeah. like, you know, three, four years later and then know that they were right and that you probably should have stuck with what you were doing originally but i'm happy it worked out for you what did what was it like how do you even discover animation on youtube because it took me a while to do that i think Suzy was the first like animation youtuber that i bumped into and then like through him you see the suggested videos and then you kind of like filter in and you get deeper and deeper into the community was there anyone that caught your eye was there a video or like a, something that you saw yeah, it was actually, I, w I went back to Jamaica to visit my family and my little brother by this time is like maybe like seven or eight. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he was watching this one dude named the odd ones out. Oh yeah. Okay. Who's oh, like oh, super, yeah. he's like the biggest channel now in that space. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
that was my first time seeing it. And you know what? I had watched Woozy when I was younger, mm-hmm. but I completely forgot about it. Like, mm-hmm. I completely forgot about that content. I, I saw him, like, during his, like, he had, like, a series on, like, um, Star Wars or Back to the Future themed. Anyway, so it was really the odd ones out I saw. And I was like, oh, I think I could do that. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and so... Um, I started messing around with it. I made like a video just playing around. Like, oh, that was kind of fun. That made a second one. I was like, oh, wow, no, this is fun. And I think I'm good at this. Mm -hmm. And really what sold me on it, it was like when I would make vlogs, like I was experimenting with YouTube a lot. I made vlogs, all kinds of videos. The only people who would ever see him and comment were like my friends. You Mm -hmm. feel me? And it was like getting like, you know, like 23 views. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then. It's on the same channel or a separate channel? Yeah. You know, because you just keep changing the content when you don't, when you haven't figured it out, Mm -hmm. you know? And then when I started uploading animations for the first time, random people, like people I didn't know were commenting and Mm -hmm. like saying, oh, wow, this is really cool. And I was like, is this someone I know? Yeah. And then I realized, I, like, I think I even replied to one. I was like, do I know you? And he's like, nah, bro, I just found your video. It was good. <laughs> I was like, I was like, whoa. And then, and then it cracked like, like a hundred views. And I was like, what is going on? Yeah. And so I was like, that's really what got me hooked. Mm-hmm. And then I made a third one. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it to win how, it. How are you animating this at this point? Like the, technic- the technical standpoint, like software, like how are you actually doing that? So, yeah, I'm using like a, a bamboo like tablet that I got from Best Buy for like $40. You can't like there's no screen. Like it's just like a, a tablet you draw on and you look at the screen as you're drawing. And um, I'm drawing everything in Photoshop, editing it in Premiere Pro. And um, I, that's how I did it for a while. Eventually, I upgraded to a tablet, like with a screen. Mm-hmm. But I continued to do the Photoshop Premiere Pro combo for like the first three and a half years. Damn. It wasn't until like because like the, I was so intimidated by the actual animation software, and I gotten so comfortable in the Premiere Pro street mm-hmm. like that's. But then eventually, like one month, I was like, I'm going to take this month off and I'm just going to learn how to use the animation software. And then it was like, it only took me like two weeks to get a hang of it. Mm-hmm. It's like, I should have did this like two years ago. That's like me with thumbnails. I made them on After Effects for way too long. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I just, I did VFX. So I was comfortable in After Effects and I yeah. didn't want to learn Photoshop. Mm-hmm. I never switched over. Mm-hmm. Um, how, will, how long you was you? You never went to Photoshop. I still, never I still, I still use After Effects. I don't lie. That's <laughs> crazy. I still use GIMP. I don't, I don't use wow. Photoshop. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. This is, but it's kind of like the same reason yeah like every single time i'll be on there and people sitting there saying like they'll show ways that you can like crop out the background like instantaneously i'm like yeah i should probably learn yeah, probably yeah, learn yeah. That. i should probably learn that but i'll just find different ways to just fucking do it uh, besides actually doing it yeah. so when you're doing that like you're doing that like frame by frame yeah i always understand like so you're writing you're drawing one frame and then drawing another and another and another and you no, know so so like you copy and paste all those same, like for instance like over a course of five seconds right the character will be still for like maybe four of that you know and there's just one movement or like you know so you're just duplicating frames until you need to have a movement you know what i mean okay so you draw the character once you duplicate the frames and then when the character moves then you're drawing again but you're going to try and retain as many of the elements from the previous frame as possible mm-hmm. only moving the the components that need to be moved but if a nigga is walking and he's like mm-hmm. moving his feet you have to draw each time he moves his feet and then yeah it so like you can do a walk cycle a clean walk cycle with only like like five drawings if oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so five so you just draw each position and then it's all about timing how you space out the frames and the more frames the in-betweens they call them you know, getting technical, but yeah, the more of those in between frames, so go from like five to like maybe nine, the smoother the animation yeah. looks. So like Disney stuff, yeah, like every two frames a new drawing. You yeah. feel me? But like my stuff, you know, is much simpler, much like you know, more like indie, and so mm-hmm. I can get away with like. But how long did it take though? Like if you if it was like a seven minute video, how long would it take you to like a seven minute video? Seven um. Or five, five, five. No, like, okay, so like, like seven is actually a pretty good number because okay, that's seven. like an average length for me. And boss, but like, um, for <laughs> for a seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh yuck! I don't like that. <laughs> All right, so like for a seven minute video though, um, you were animating for seven minutes every week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, for a seven minute video, you 
know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, about a week. About a it take you about a week. You know, six to eight hours a day. No way. <laughs> See, that's what I, that's what I that's what I think it is. Yeah. Because I'm thinking to my mom like it would have to take you hours to fucking edit like one or two scenes. Yeah. Just to get the like seven minute shit situated. Yeah. That's fucking absurd. Yeah. yeah. Like I I'll stream me animated now, and when I do that, you know, I'll be on stream for like. Five, six, seven hours, and then would have gone like forty seconds of timeline done. That is crazy. Yeah. So you be upset when niggas be like, "Nigga, you need to upload more, bro." I, I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Swoozy and Swoozy comment, they be like, "Yo, nigga, why are you uploading more? Like, yeah. what the fuck is going on?" I'm like, "Bro, he's animating this shit by hand. What yeah. the fuck are you talking about, bro?" Not yeah. only that, but like you're telling stories. So yeah. you kind of had to live a life so you have stories to tell. Right. So if you're always animating, you're going to run out of stories eventually. Now you go outside to live what life to tell a story, and then, then you got to go back. It's like, oh, man, this is a perfect story. This is a perfect yeah. story. It's a perfect story to animate, too. That's the thing, though. The story <laughs> needs to marinate a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Sometimes the best stories you can't tell right away. Uh -huh, you got to say it. Because they bit. usually it hurt you. Some. Some went like no one wants to hear the story of the time you bagged the baddie and brought her home and she gave you top. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? No one wants to hear that, story. that is absurd. Well, yeah, but, <laughs> top is crazy. yeah, no, but like that, no one wants to hear that. Like, okay, bro, you're so cool. You know what I mean? People mm -hmm. want to hear about the time you try to shoot your shot and you got curved horribly in front of all your friends. That's a really good point. Yeah. That's what they want to hear. It. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and so, like, but that story, it needs to marinate mm -hmm. because it's too raw, it's too tender. <laughs> When it just happened, you're yeah, like, I don't want nobody to know this so, happened. So then you kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine getting rejected and spending the next week in the next day. So check it out. <laughs> I was at the mall, <laughs> right? Hey, you got to relive that shit for a whole week animating yeah. that shit. Is oh, yeah. So you tell stories about like your losses then. Oh More yeah, so those than, are the best stories. Yeah. The losses, mistakes, you know, and th the best ones are the ones where. You, there is still a triumphant triumph at the end. Like mm -hmm. you, you got some kind of victory, whether it, even if it's something as small as you learned something, or if you managed to like you know turn that 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 you know like I had this one story of like you know this girl ghosted me, and then I went full like like just like I'm just gonna work hard. I'm gonna put this into the gym and into animating <laughs> and da da da. -da. And that it was actually like pre, like I had him blown up at that point. You mm -hmm. feel me? So it was like this girl that I had met, and then it was a tra you know, tragic story. Like at first she was like super into it. We're like you know having a good time, um, but at that point had very like little like game, very little understanding of female psychology. So it's like mm -hmm. wow, like this girl seems to really like me, and I really like her, and so like you're just. Oh, an open book of how much you like her and you're enjoying your time together you know classic you know ways to kill interest in a girl is for her to feel like oh this dude's like too into me mm -hmm. you feel me and then so like out of nowhere like which is what ghosting is right out of nowhere she just stops responding and then like at first again just didn't even really understand what was going on because like literally Two days ago, she was like over the house and we were having a good time together. You feel me? And so that turned into like, you know, um, I just was like, you know, I'm not going to talk to any girls or anything. I'm going to go crazy in the gym. I'm going to put even more energy into animating. And then I maintained that pace for three months. And it was in that three months I went from like 3,000 subscribers to 300,000. God, geez. Yeah. And so it was like, it kind of was like, you know, so even though I didn't get the girl at the end, I got something way better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, and then, you know, and then over time, you know, you just, you, you figure out, you can figure out the girl thing whenever. Mm -hmm. But like, gaining success when you're young, that's something that's like, changes the direction of your life forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. <clears throat> so that's you, like a, yeah. A what story. would you say to people that are like struggling with, uh, like, keeping interest with women? Okay, so like, I mean, I'm hmm, the I feel like yeah, yeah, so when it comes to like keeping interest with women, first and foremost, I, I have to talk about it from the perspective of God, mm -hmm. right? I have to talk about it from the perspective of being a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so like the advice I would have given a year ago is completely different from the advice now. Ultimately, it's the same thing, you know, like... <sighs> Women 
don't want to feel like you know you're obsessed with them you know women don't want to feel like women always want to feel in my opinion they like it when they feel like you know they earned you mm -hmm. right and the biggest easiest way for someone to feel like you, they didn't earn you but rather like you're just like you earned them or you're design you're like you're the one that like got them like women date up typically is, is what i've seen and so as a result of that you know like if a woman is really interested in you initially and then she loses interest it's probably because she started to feel like she isn't dating up mm -hmm. you know you're responding too quickly to texts you know showing too much interest you know being too open about how you feel how much you like her things like that buying her gifts taking her on vacations you know what i'm saying like what has she done to earn any of that mm -hmm. you know usually nothing um and so you know um you like canceling plans with your boys or canceling you know like you have like a work schedule and then you completely just like throw it away to go and hang out with her mm -hmm. again you know what i mean like she's noticing all of this and it's like oh like this guy's like really into me and that just kills it for them mm -hmm. you feel me and so like that's, that's one facts. yeah that's and like, so do you, do you, <laughs> you say, i'll listen to it like an audio <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like it's possible for um so by that logic most of the time that means then like, if you're a guy shooting a shot at a woman, yeah. you're the one pursuing her. Mm -hmm. So how do you make her feel like she's earning you if you're pursuing her? So pursuit means, like, you're taking the lead in terms of, like, you're the one who asked for her number. You're the one who asked to go out on the first date. You know what I'm saying? You're probably the one who makes the first move in the bedroom. You know what I mean? So that's, what, that's the pursuit, right? You're supposed to be taking the first steps as you go along but pursuit doesn't mean there's a difference between like chasing and pursuing mm -hmm. even though like the <laughs> definition in the dictionary might be the same right which is why Lowe's making that face no I'm looking at this thing right <laughs> <laughs> put the mic a little closer but, to your mouth if you can John. <laughs> right closer yeah there you go I understand what you're saying, though. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. if you want to take the first step, understandably so, like, because you actively pursuing, but she still wants to feel like the concept of a man with some type of standards and purpose actually went after her. Yeah. Which validates who she is, like, her her value in that concept. Because if you, like, a loser-ass nigga pursuing her, she's going to be like, like, how, how am I, I'm going to gauge my, who I am based off of this nigga pursuing me. So yeah. like, come on, this is, look at this nigga right here. Like, this is the nigga that's pursuing me? Yeah. Then no, that doesn't validate who I think I am. Yeah. So yeah. ultimately, right, like, they want to be chosen by a dude that they find attractive, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's it. They want to be chosen by a dude that find, And that choosing, right, looking like they've been chosen is the pursuit, is the, you know, hitting her up, you know, it's the asking her to go out, all of that. But she also, at the same time, like, wants to feel like she's dating up and... Uh, sustain the value that you have as a man. Exactly. And so all of a sudden, when she becomes... No woman <laughs> wants to be... I hate this guy. What? Every time you talk, he just looks at me laughing. No, no woman wants to, like, feel like they're your top priority. Right. Is what I, right. Basically, that, to simplify it... If well, they, they say they, they... Sometimes they say that's what they want, though. Because but they don't know what they want. Yeah. It, so you could be the man. Yeah. Yeah, no, they don't know what you they want. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I, I have plenty of arguments over priority. I have lots of priority arguments. Yeah. And I guess I'm just too straightforward. I'm like, you can't be my top priority. So that would, turn them on. I don't know why they like arguing. They like being they like starting an argument and getting put in their place. For yeah. no reason. Yeah. Mm. Drama is drama is definitely something that, you know, a lot of people like get off on mm -hmm. you know and fighting is drama no that's crazy how do you manage yeah. that no that's crazy because you yeah, gotta like that is, that is. now that is the definition like, of I crazy i never yeah. in my life so I, just, argue. I just miss yeah it's why crazy. we arguing mm -hmm. well, what were you about to say i forgot you had, i was I gonna say how you, no, no, you no, manage no, no, that because you kind of have to before that you say i can't make you my top priority what were you about oh, to yeah, say? yeah you can't be my top priority because your priority is the thing you spend most of the time on exactly not spending most of the time on you yeah objectively that's not possible i can't be here if i did that Mm -hmm. And if I did that previously, you wouldn't even know I was I existed. Ooh. Like I wouldn't be in the position I am. So, yeah. Yeah. so women are not your top priority. Oh, of course not. Of course. Yeah. High mm -hmm. value right there. No, it has nothing to do with being high value. I just it, is. it literally is. What? I mean, you can call it that, but I just know what I'm what I'm pursuing 
is ambitious in nature. You don't get there by prioritizing. Do y'all believe in high value men? Do you think of that's course. a thing? Yeah. This nigga put his hands up. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Of course. All right, what, what's your definition of a high value man? I think just characteristics and morals that, that keep you sustainable. Um, through everything has to be done. You have to stop. <laughs> you have to stop. What is, is there a well, joke? I don't, I don't know why he's laughing. Like no like every, time he's, every time you talk, he just <laughs> I have no idea. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you ask him what's the qualification be at a high value man. I'm gonna listen. I think, I think it is just some type of um principle, discipline, and, and morals that are rather consistent with other. Like a lot of your peers, yeah. Like I think that would be more or less like there can be different things about it, but I don't. I don't really subscribe to the concept. Like one thing I disagree with Kevin Samuels is like he believed that you had to make a certain amount to be a high value man. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's to be the case. Like I think you can make eighty k and still be a high value man based off of discipline, principles, beliefs that you used to have mm-hmm. that lie within some form of morality. Yeah, no, like I think John can be a high value man even if he broke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and like I think Lo can still be a high value man even though he's. Probably three high value guys. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's all good, man. He could be the highest and widest value, man. You know, you know. But, but some people, but some people would argue the opposite, though, because yeah. they'll say because I'm fat, I can't be high value. Yeah. yeah. And they say because he still live with his mom, he can't be high value. At all. <laughs> yeah. So like they'll just they be like that. They can't. So, they can't work. It's friendly banter. It's, that's what they'll say. That's what yeah, like say. He'll never be 300 pounds again. You know what I'm saying? He'll never be get to that level again. And by the time I leave my mom, you might be bigger. <laughs> no, I doubt that. No, nah, you that. probably will. <laughs> I doubt that. Anyway, oh um, boy. As a guy, what should you do to increase your? But do you uh, agree with? Do you agree with what I said though? Like, is that yeah, no. Like I, I and Don, my bad. Don't mean to rush. We're we're forty five years apart, so that's probably why he made. Oh jokes. boy, you know we're forty five years. That's apart. That's not a your mom. Guy. That's not a your mom joke. That's a your broke joke, huh? That's no, not no. a your mom. Yeah, it is. You, you live with your me. mom is a you broke they're like, joke. They're like brothers. <laughs> what yeah, the fuck? I can tell. Well, yeah, so, but do you more or less? So <laughs> that's a no. That's crazy. Tom's <laughs> on Gretel. Mm. It's not brothers like in the way that y'all argue. You guys oh. like bigger. Oh, okay. You guys bigger oh, like bigger. brothers. Yeah. You but do you, bigger, do you, but yes. you more or less agree that with that? Like that's because I know people have various reasons. I think this is an ongoing conversation in the in like the internet convo that we're having. A subject that like the concept of a high value man varies from person to person. Yeah, it has to. There's, I think there are going to be some like core thing. I think the same things matter to everyone, but the but what's on top that varies from woman to woman. You feel yeah. me? So like, if they're like. Certain factors, all right, how you look, how much money you make, you know, your character as a person, right, your personality, um, you know, I guess, you, and, and that includes, like, your sense of humor and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is there? Your network or your status in the community or amongst your peers. For sure. And um, your... I mean, that, 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 that looks, money, status... Uh, personality, hand size, huh? Oh, yeah, your hand size. No, that, no, he said pan size. Pan size. Oh well, that falls into looks. Yeah. No, but I'll, yeah, but you know, like the motion in the ocean. You know, mm-hmm. I think yeah, that sure. that counts for some too for women. Of course, of course. You feel me? And so it's like, but what? How you arrange yeah, that? Sure. Yeah. You know, and where you know what what constitutes high value to one woman might not might be low value to another yeah. you know what i'm saying like there are women out there who look but at I'm a dude. About you though you, yeah. you not other like your perception of what a high value man is like not I mean, based off of what a woman may say or not. i feel like the high the a high value person man is one who strives to walk in righteousness okay. so so one who strives to like you know obey the will of god okay i think that is the the most important thing because everything else falls in place after that. Okay. You know, God commands men to work hard. You know what I'm saying? If you work hard and you fulfill all the other characteristics of being a godly man, you're honest, you're kind, you're, you're merciful, you're forgiven. You're going to have good relationships with people, you know, in and outside of the business world. So now you're hardworking and people like you and you get along with others. You're going to be successful. That gets taken care of. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and everything else as well. It will just fall into place. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and then, yeah. And then because there aren't that many men who are trying to embody that, 
you know, a real devout Christian woman, when she sees that in you, that is going to always take number one, like p- precedence in terms of, wow, this is a, a man of God. This is a, a man that can lead me and our children. Should we have it? This is a man I know I can rely on. I, I can trust, mm. you know what I'm saying? Um, and so, yeah, bro, ever since becoming Christian, like for instance, when, before I became like a devout Christian, you know, like anytime I need to go somewhere without my girl, like my girl would be very concerned, you know what I'm saying? Because she knows how the world is. She knows how dudes in this, this realm operate, you know what I'm saying? And uh, even though I never gave her a reason to not think I was a trustworthy person, she would still get concerned Mm -hmm. ever since becoming a devout Christian. Her only thing is, Oh, I'm going to miss you. But like, I can feel it. She's not worried about me, like doing something, you know, um, that, that would hurt her because she knows that like, it's not about me not wanting to hurt you. It's about me not wanting to, you know, sin against God. Mm-hmm. It's about me not wanting to to disobey God. Mm-hmm. And how, she, how long you been in? I'm sorry, Coach, but how long you been in a relationship? Just so we know the context. Um, so I've been married f- since last oh November. Congrats! Thank you. Yeah, I've been married since last November, mm-hmm. and we have been dating seriously. That so January 2020 was when we started dating seriously, okay. and we had start started talking for um, the year previous to that. But I was in my BS. I was like moving crazy, yeah. and then I started to get more interested in having a serious relationship. Getting married, all of that, and then it was it wasn't until like two months ago that I committed wholeheartedly to being like. A devout Christian. So this is all like a fairly quick process. Yeah. Like relative to what a lot of other people kind of. Yeah. I'm completely through. different that I'm a completely different person than I was like even two months ago because of the Christian thing. But definitely even prior to that, you know, two years ago, I was like, I'm never getting married. Yeah. I don't want kids. I want to just do what the changed? singular. Uh, I mean, I just was, you know, I was chasing money. I was chasing clout. I was chasing these things and I, it just was feeling very hollow. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I was doing the run around thing, like, you know, casual dating thing. Mm-hmm. And it was very empty and unfulfilling. And, uh, and so like, and then Kevin Samuels blew up around that time. And so I'm for the first time in a while, like I'm hearing somebody talk about the that because it would seem where everywhere you look everyone's bashing marriage you know everyone's bashing like committing to a girl right red pill became so such a common ideology in the dating space Mm -hmm. and so like it was like oh yeah getting married is corny and stupid it's unwise and lame right Mm -hmm. if you get married is because you have a scarcity mindset and you don't think you can bag girls you know constantly over time when Mm -hmm. you know and so like that dudes who get married they're just trying to lock down some you know reliable um you know sex Mm -hmm. and so it was a mixture of that and <laughs> that it, was their criticism of marriage huh i didn't know that wow i figured that, the that, criticism would like be the a, risk that comes with no it. so that was a part that's of a it part of the, okay. no yeah. so that's a part like when the people in the red pill community criticize dudes who get married that's mm-hmm. like what they say why you're getting married right uh-huh. and then they say it's foolish because oh if you guys get a divorce divorce rate is yeah, 50 50 yeah. percent mm-hmm. they take half your stuff you have to start over your life is now like you know torn up from the the foundation and and so it's like yeah why would you ever get married you know just Mm -hmm. get game get money you know and then be a bachelor for the rest of your life yeah yeah. or at least until you like 40 50 years old and then you'll get your little young yeah right and that's what they say you know like (laughs) they tell you the older you get the and if you're getting always working on yourself making yourself more successful you'll never have a problem you know pulling a 20 some year old you know hottie that's what they all say right Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if the the numbers or the statistics actually bear that out. And then also you have to think about like, what is that relationship based on? Mm -hmm. She's with you because you're rich and famous. You know what I'm saying? That's she's not. And so like, and you might be okay with that, but you know, it's like, uh, nah, you know? So anyway, I, my, I started Kevin Samuels, you know, he was like really opening my eyes to, you know, there being value in marriage. He was pointing out a lot of important, like, interesting things like most ceos are married have kids you know presidents they're married like there's a 
there's something that comes with being married that like that kind of like certifies your manhood you know what i mean not that it makes you more of a man but it's kind of like oh this is a guy with some stability mm -hmm. this is a guy you know who doesn't have commitment problems i've, I've seen that i've seen it from him where he, he was like literally like if you you don't matter how rich you are if you 40 something you've never been in a legit relationship people gonna look at you crazy like yeah like, what the fuck is, like how is that possible because you got all the other things but you ain't never been in a legitimate yeah. relationship. You, you will look kind of crazy. And like in my culture, in Jamaican culture, like if you, if you, the minute you become financially secure, mm -hmm. you're supposed to start having kids. Like, mm. like if you, like I'm thinking of one Jamaican celebrity in particular that like is around, he's, he's around my age and uh, he doesn't, as of, I don't know, I haven't been keeping tabs on him lately, but like, for a while, a criticism that he would get a lot from like Jamaican men is like, dude, you have all this money and this fame and da da da, and you ain't have a single kid. Yeah, you know, it's kind of weird, bro. What's going on with you? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. and so, yeah, you know, having children, being married, it, it, there is a stability, there is a, some good that comes with that. You feel me? And so, I was, I saw that, you know, and then I always, I've known I've always wanted a big family mm -hmm. and marriage is the best institution big, like to eight? raise, like as many as God will give me, oh, you like 12, yeah, yeah, as many as God you will be give next me, Nick Cannon? <laughs> no? you be the next Nick Cannon? No, but it would have to be with one woman. Oh yeah. Nick Cannon is all over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It would no, have to be with one woman. You, know you got two more kids. Right? And uh, yeah. <laughs> so they just got announced. You got two more oh, kids. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. That's horrible. That's horrible. <laughs> That's terrible, but yeah, um, I definitely want like as many, <laughs> oh, Jesus. I want as many children as God would give me with my wife. Um, you know, uh, He recently blessed us again, so she's pregnant again wow. with our second. Congratulations! Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, you're being right. serious about? As oh many yeah, yeah. As like if we continue <laughs> at this pace, I, ideally, I mean, things. Ha How old are you? I'm 27, okay. about to be 28 okay. at the end of the year. I was about to ask you. Damn. Mm -hmm. like, you just so like, you like, you fit, you look like a, a, a good, uh, a blissful youth pastor. I'm about to say, <laughs> <laughs> and they come with a t shirt like that, like, everybody new, it don't matter, just wear what you want, we're comfortable, we're comfortable vibing, we're vibing to Christ. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, congratulations though. Thank yeah, you, bro. Ooh, yeah. so you're too, you're too. Damn, you can need a big crib, man. Yeah. Or a lot of bunk beds. Yeah, no, I mean, Dev right now we will be we would be able to manage I think comfortably up till three kids. Okay. Okay. But we are already looking to like we lease the house we're in right now. Oh, okay. We were good. trying to buy one and then the market just was wasn't crazy. Yeah. Pretty brutal and right so, now, man. Yeah. yeah. And so I ended up um releasing and then where I'm like, if this house was for sale when we were looking to buy, we would have bought it. And yeah. now we're so glad we're leasing it because mm -hmm. we get to move. Cause like you know, there's certain things you won't learn about a house until you live in it for a while. Yeah. You know, and you don't get that luxury when you're buying a house. You mm -hmm. know, like we were the house we're in, you know, looks nice and all that, but like it's right beside a lake. Guess what we didn't think about? Water bugs. Snakes. Mosquitoes, Mosquitoes water bugs, bugs every bugs. All, bro, it is a breeding ground for pests and wildlife, unlike we would have anticipated. And that during the summer, like all of us in the house, like me, my wife, even my little daughter, we're all just like covered in mosquito bites. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? Like not the baby gladly because, you know, we do our best. But like my wife, like her legs would just be all mosquito bites. You know, she go outside for like five minutes to come back inside. Waiting. Yeah. Yeah, looking. yeah, bro. Like, like I think we see one. Out. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Summertime, man. Like, <laughs> some, some sunlight. <laughs> oh, you just got done hooping. Beast. Yeah. Beast. Beast. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, so now we're like, bad. yeah, let's move. If we had bought that house, we would have been like, now we have to try and sell the house yeah. after a That's year right. and all that. Yeah, it's always better you like, yeah. Least least to buy is like fire, in my opinion. Yeah, like said, it's all yeah. part of the plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything so, happens for a reason. Yeah. So, so now that you're making this, I don't know, you, would you rather? Because I'm about to transition. Yeah. Yeah, now that you're making this transition, because it seemed like, especially in the last year or two, the transition has kind of been made. The content and like who you are as a person is drastically different from where you were yeah. four years ago. How, how, matter of fact, before, me, uh, before I said that, how long were you doing animation before you got to where you are right now? So yeah, so I've been doing animation. I believe now that channel, like my oldest animated video, I think has just passed the five year mark. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Congrats. So five years ago. Thank you. Yeah. You know, like 
it, that was when I started doing the animation. But about a little over a year ago, I started doing the reacting thing. Mm -hmm. And then within the last few months, I started taking streaming, you know, more seriously. Mm -hmm. So what has been the reception when you when you transition from that type of content to where you are now? What has been of my original fans? Yeah. Yeah. Original from the from five. Three, four, five years ago, kind of transitioned into the content you're kind of making now and who you are is a, just a different man as well. Yeah, some came along, some didn't. Um, to be honest, I didn't really promote my second channel, my reaction channel to my animation fans really like that. It's probably better that way. Yeah, it was like more like that. The My channel that's now my reaction channel started off as like a vlog and like a vlog channel. And then... um. Like, I cut off my first set of logs. I threw it up there. You know, I put uploaded, like, a fitness video, like, a workout video. So, I just had, like, a a base of, like, 80,000 subscribers of, you know, because my animation channel had, like, a couple million. And so, like, I got, like, a quick 50K, like, within a week or some. Mm -hmm. That grew to 80K over time. But I wasn't posting on that channel. Then I started doing the reacting and stuff. And then... You know, these people were like, it just started to grow yeah. with that foundation of views. And then, you know, it's getting recommended to people who are looking for videos like that. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, I have people who only know me from that channel. I'm very confident. I have people that watch my reaction channel every day that have no idea that I make animation. I'm going to give it a bean with you. I, I was one of them, no cap. Oh, really? Yeah, because I didn't know until later on somebody told me, oh, he does this and they showed me. And I was yeah. like, I didn't even know he ever did anime. Yeah. Animation, excuse me. Yeah, I ain't never know that, yeah. Thank you. So yeah, I was one of the people who like got put on to just solely because of the reactions of other stuff you was um, yeah. kind of saying. But is it, because I've seen in the comment section, I'm also in a few discords where people are like, yeah, man, like, I don't really fuck with Young Don no more. Does that ever yeah. like get to you? You try to like adjust or you just feel like that just kind of comes with it nah because that's what happens when you start saying controversial stuff you know that's what happens when you start sharing your opinions see anything that matters is controversial mm. anything that matters to people no matter what your opinion on it is on it someone is going to feel strongly in the opposite direction for sure and that's what makes something controversial mm. you feel me um and so when you start doing that people who you know, because for like, you know, it's you can pretty much say I played it safe on my animation channel. You know, like I wasn't giving my opinion on things. I was saying this happened. This was funny. This is what I learned from it. You know, it's easy to like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like and, you know, it, it, it's but then you start talking about abortion. You know, you start talking about God. You start talking about, you know. Um, gender. gender roles yeah, gender. or, or yeah. gender right yeah, man. and all that craziness and then people are like well hey wait a minute I liked you before yeah. you and you wasn't talking like this it's the reason why celebrities don't give their opinions yeah you know they really don't yeah like at all not at all very rarely yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and you know so because there's some risk associated with being like less relatable we were talking about it on a playback video probably gonna drop uh, it probably dropped by the time this drops, but mm. about Steve Harvey, where like everything he has to say is relatable. Yeah, but yeah, him as a person is so not relatable. Right, but he has to present himself like he is mm -hmm. because otherwise his audience is just gonna be like, oh, he doesn't understand us at all. So yeah. he'll say or do things or tell stories or have segments that like pitch him in a way where he's a lot more presentable. Yeah, because it's easier to monetize. But in all reality, like every person's gonna have like different opinions. Yeah, and if you're the type of person to only like people who had the same opinions as you then you're okay probably watching an animation channel where you could talk about how like you got curved or ghosted or you mm. bagged this one girl. But then when they hear your opinions on like anything else they might disagree with, they're like, Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is the same guy. Yeah. Right. And you know, and so I just knew that was going to come with the territory, but you know, there are pros and cons to everything. And the pro is that people, the people who rock with you mm. really rock with you. For sure. For I sure. never had that with animation channel. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just like, you know, reliable, interesting content. If you like my content, you know what I'm saying? Like they were like, Oh, I know what I'm gonna get cartoons. I'm gonna probably laugh a couple times, you know, mm -hmm. you know, he knows how to hold momentum telling a story. Cool. Mm -hmm. But they didn't really know me. You know, they knew, like, I guess they felt like they know me because they knew some of my stories. But you aren't just what has happened to you. You are 
the opinions you formed, your worldview that you formed as a result of the things that have happened to you. And that part was a the part they weren't really getting. And so when I started sharing that, you know, people who, you know, like me because they didn't know me. Now they're starting to get to know me and they're like, I don't like you. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's okay. Because. Is uh, it though? Yeah. It, but isn't it contradicting everything that been, is being pushed to have people believe? Because if the whole concept is that everybody's supposed to be open to who everybody is, mm -hmm. even if it is going against like facts or, or science or whatever. Mm -hmm. Why is it like, do you don't, you don't ever feel like your beliefs are being isolated from what everybody else is being told to just accept? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fine with people like not. Not everyone isn't going to agree on everything for sure. And a lot of people's identities are wrapped up in some of their beliefs for sure. And so when you say, you know, let's say one of your identities is being like one of these like LGBT or trans like advocates, like allies, right? Even if you're not, you don't consider yourself a part of that community. You have a rainbow flag in your 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 your, your bio. You're proud of the fact that you're best friends with a, like a gay dude. You know you you help you help nurse him through his monkeypox outbreak. You know what I'm saying like <laughs> was I not supposed to say that? <laughs> no, <laughs> like, you, know, you know what I'm saying like <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. You know what I'm saying like you you really identify with that. Um, and then I come along. And be like, oh, homosexuality is an abomination. And, uh, um, you know, it's a sin. It's a sin like adultery and, you know, having sex out of wedlock. God hates all sin. You know, he says, if you've broken the least of my laws, it's as if you've broken all of them. But it is a sin. It is wrong. And we see that AIDS, HIV, you know, what's going on now. These aren't random like occurrences. This is judgment from God. He judges. He punishes people in different ways the bible talks about this everything mm. from natural disasters to plagues to even just abandonment which is what we currently are going through here in america we've been abandoned by god the signs of that are actually um well documented first there's a sexual revolution check then there's a homosexual revolution first with the women then the men check and then there's what is called a um mm, uh, what is it called? It's it's basically insanity. It's basically mass insanity, right? Men thinking they're women, women thinking they're men. This, it, what is it? It's not, is it called the abhorrent mind? What yeah, is well, it called? Wrong. What's wrong with you, nigga? And so right. like, so yeah. yeah, so it's like, you know, it, it's just like hysteria. You know, I just was listening to a story the other day of a, um, a little boy, 10 year old boy who, um, is now the youngest trans runway model, right? Mm -hmm. And they dress him up like a girl, and now he and he has oh, he like has he's, adult he's, like he's trans, as in he's had the procedures. Or he, he's I, I don't identify. No, no. So like he's had it. everything but the procedure, I believe. Okay. He's been, tra but he's been trans since he was four. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so, how did he, he know that? He knew that his parents just knew. He parents, his parents knew, like, because he's been uh, it's six years. He's only ten years old, and so since he was four years old, they have been raising this boy like a girl. Mm. And so, you know, this ten year old, it, like, and this is in the article. They're talking about this, like, oh wow, isn't this inspiring? It's getting DMs. From, yeah, isn't it's getting DMs from like adults, like grown men and women, asking for advice. On from a 10 year old from a 10 year old so this is what i mean like insanity right so it's not just people thinking they can switch sexes but it's even things like that that's going on you know what i'm saying like but the, point, the, the point i'm making though is that why do you why is it acceptable God. why why is a 10 year old that get on a quick zoom call <laughs> it's crazy yeah. But why right. is it? Why is it? The, the one thing I always don't understand is I think, <laughs> yo, nigga, it's called the repubate mind. By the way, remember I was saying again? the 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 phases of God's yeah, abandoning a it? nation. It's called that insanity. It's mm -hmm. called a repubate mind. Repubate Re mind. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, I just remembered. But, but yeah, why is it? What do you don't think that it's a bit inconsistent? Or un hey, you probably do, but you you don't think that it's a bit inconsistent and unfair that we are supposed to just accept that concept that you just like explained with yeah. transgender and all that. But as soon as 
you say your beliefs based off of biblical text, people are like shunning that. It's not unfair. It's exactly the way the world is exactly the way it's supposed to be. Okay. Because the this realm is ran by Lucifer. It's ran by Satan. Mm-hmm. And so it, it, Jesus says in the Bible, if you love me, the world will hate you. If mm-hmm. you love the world, you hate God. It's really one of the two. You can only either serve the devil, you can only either serve Satan, or you can serve God. That's really your only two options. Mm-hmm. And when you look at, so anything, the word evil literally just means in opposition to the wisdom of God, to the laws of God, the instruction of God. So you can just pretty much look at everything God tells you to do and all the way that God instructs us to live, figure out what the opposite is of that, and Mm -hmm. you will know exactly what the world wants to embrace. Okay. You know, and so, you know, this whole trans, you know, LGBT Mm -hmm. stuff, this is the opposite of what God asks of us to behave. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we know it's going to be uplifted. But the Christianity is... It's the worst thing. It's the worst thing in the eyes of the world because it is the religion of obeying and glorifying God. And so when you, that's why everything else is protected or Mm. embraced, right? Mm. And so like I experienced this recently, I had a a back and forth with a few Muslims and uh, you can see like there are things in place to protect Muslims online. I would agree that the religion (laughs) of Islam is not as... You think we get protected online? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, you... you, you, In what ways? Like, um, demonetized videos will get taken down. Um, The... Wait, for Muslims or for Christians? What do you mean? For Christians. Like, if you're you're criticizing the Muslim community, it is like they have now... I know it's recent. I I know it hasn't always been this way for Muslims, but as of late, they have become a protected group. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like... You can crack on Christians all day, every day. Your video is not going to get taken down for it. Mm. You feel me? It's like making fun of white people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's no consequence right now. Right. And so, like, Christianity, that is, like, the situation. Well, unless it's a white woman, you know, and you're, like, a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, White men are definitely easy pickings right now. Right, right. I just go crazy with white men. Not a thing happening to me at all, bro. Exactly. No pause. Pause pause is cool. Pause, 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 pause. We don't hear that. Yeah, pause, 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 pause. Yeah. Because easy pickings is crazy. This portion of the podcast is brought to you by Roman Swipes. Yo, tell my fellas out there, have you ever been in that thing nice and wet and you just laying it out? Ha, 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 ha. And then you just start figuring out, man, I'm about to bust, man. It's getting it's getting close, man. You start singing, twinkle, twinkle, little star. You start counting down to 10. You start naming all 50 states, but it ain't working for you. You just try to keep your mind up. It ain't working. It ain't working. It ain't working. And, oh! and just like that, it's over. Now you have to have a very uncomfortable conversation with your partner that nobody wants to have. But now you don't have to do that anymore because Roman has you covered. Roman is an online men's health company that is changing the game by aiding you in lasting longer during sex with their Roman swipes. Not only are these swipes effective, easy to use, fast acting, but also you do not have to have a prescription to use them. All you have to do is just take the swipe out the packet, swipe it on, let it dry, and now you're ready to go. What makes it even better is that it's not transferable, so your partner doesn't have to worry at all. Now, if any of this sounds interesting to you at all, make sure you go to GetRoman.com slash peer-to-peer and get $10 off your first order of swipes plus free two-day shipping. Make sure you click the link in the description to get $10 off swipes so you can start having longer-lasting sex. And once more, a huge shout-out to Roman for sponsoring this portion of the podcast. You know, what's funny is I've noticed that, like, historically, it was, like, re- people that were religious that were less tolerant of those that weren't. Mm-hmm. But now it's the opposite, where it's, like, people who are agnostic or spiritual in a way, but don't really believe in any one faith or practice it, at least, that are less tolerant of people that are But religious. they don't even know it, though. They don't know. Like, they I don't think, know the first thing about Like, I, I don't know if you watch this shit where I've been preaching H3H3. Right. No. H- I, don't think, I don't think Ethan even knows how... Like intolerant he actually is. But when so he that's says the most that interesting shit, part though. for me. So Atlanta kind of clarified that because when I moved here, it is insane how little people know about Islam here. Mm-hmm. Like John, do you know what Eid is? Hmm? Eid. Eid is like a week, right? 
So yeah, it's a celebration that happens two times a year, Mm -hmm. and each one has its own significance. But it's like the biggest celebration of the year for Muslims. Yeah, now you can go to a lot of different cities and countries, and there won't be a person in that country that doesn't know what that celebration is. Right. So I don't know. It's just like depending on which environment you're in, I think the tolerance is just a little bit different. Sure. I think. um, Yeah, it's it's funny because like growing up, like. I would see Christian pastors or you'd see those viral videos of just uh, people that practice the faith being less tolerant and then being criticized for it. Like you need to be more open minded. The times have changed and things of that nature. Right. Um, But now it's like if you believe in your faith and you just say what's on your mind. Like, for example, I believe what I believe as a Muslim. You believe what you believe as a Christian. Mm -hmm. We disagree. Right. But I'm tolerant of your beliefs. Right. The same way you are of mine. Yeah. But I don't see that same tolerance from people that don't believe in religion. Yeah. No, definitely. Because Especially because they don't understand the first thing about it. They might understand Christianity a little bit if they're from this country, like the yeah. basics, but they don't know the first thing about literally any other religion. But they might hear some like talking points they've heard before, but they couldn't put in words um, like just concisely what the belief is really about and how they practice. Yeah, and I would say the average person doesn't have a clue about Christianity either. They they ha- they, they, yeah. they know the you know Christmas and Easter. Yeah, they yeah, exactly. They know the um the commercialized version, the watered down. It's really not Christianity. It's the version of Christianity though that can be popular. It's the it's the Stephen Curry. Form of Christian Steph Curry form of Christianity. That's such a crazy name. No, I'm just saying. Like, here's what I mean by it. Here's what I mean by it. Okay, right? Christianity, you can boil it down to two things: telling people the bad news and then telling them the good news after. For sure. That's what you can boil it down to. For sure. Mainstream media is cool if you just push the good news part. Jesus loves you. Mm-hmm. Jesus preach forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Jesus pre preach, you know, tolerance and mercy and all these things, and that's true. Mm-hmm. If you pre, if you only talk about that part, that form of Christianity gets embraced because it's harmless. Mm-hmm. Because it what doesn't tell you about your sins. That's what Jesus says. This is why you hate me because I tell you about the crimes you're committing against God. So when you start telling them the bad news, that's when they despise you. When you tell them that oh these behaving like this acting like this you know god hates that behavior and your his wrath is abiding upon you now you're a problem mm. you feel me mm-hmm. so that's what i mean this is the difference between tim tebow and steph curry this is why tim tebow no one likes him but steph curry everyone loves him mm-hmm. for his faith because his faith is it has no teeth I just thought Tim Tebow was trash at sport. Yeah, yeah. That's, I thought he that's had a couple good years, him. but like, I mean, I, but I'm not familiar with what his rhetoric may have been. So I don't know what he said, but yeah. I just thought he was trash. I just thought, thought he was trash. He was. Tim Tebow he was, was after like a couple years, bro. He was. Uh, he played. Yeah. I don't know why. I thought yeah, I heard that is Tim Duncan. That is true. No, Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. I remember. That is true. No, that, I, didn't, I didn't even know. I never knew what he. No, that said. is true. That Steph Curry is like elite basketball yeah. player, and Tim Tebow was like whatever yeah, quarterback. So it's like I get that component, but. People also dislike him for his, his how outspoken he was about his faith. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it was because he didn't, you know, shy away from telling you why. But people don't care about good news if you don't give them the bad news first. Mm-hmm. No one cares if you have a cure for a disease they don't believe they have or know about. Mm-hmm. If you come yeah. up to someone and like, hey, I got, I got the cure for this disease. And they're like, all right, whatever. But if I come and tell you, hey, by the way, you have this disease, you're terminally ill, you're going to die soon, it's going to be horrible. Now you're like, you're like, oh my God. And you have the, oh, my apologies, Lord. And then you take the cure, now they're grabbing it out of your hand. There's yes, no amount of money they won't pay to get it. And so that is why we need to, to, to tell them the truth about the law, the truth about, you know, um, what's going on. But for years, I'm not going to lie and be honest with you, for years, because I heard people always say, like, it feels like Christianity is under attack or religion in general is under attack. And I never I never understood it, mm-hmm. to be quite frank, but I never understood it. And fair enough, I actually think you opened me up more to the concept because I always well, would listen to you and other couple other people. And I'll be like, but he's just saying what he believes. Recently, I just started reading the Bible. Like, I'm not done, but I just like start. Reading. Yeah, no, that's and, awesome. And, and I'll be thinking to myself, like, he's saying what's. 
in the Bible. Like, I don't know what, like, yeah. and we even did a video about this pastor on uh, Playback. Mm -hmm. And then, like, he's, like, literally citing biblical texts and they're arguing with this. I man. saw that video. And I'm like, bro, like, what, like, what do you want him to do, bro? And right. again, I understand, like, we can't, we all can't agree. Mm -hmm. I get that. But at the end of the day, bro, if one post of respect, you want me to respect, you want me, if I don't believe that a man can be a woman and a woman be a man, yeah. but I'm, I'm supposed to respect you as a person, it's yeah. cool. Then if why can't you just respect the shit I'm saying? Because it has nothing. But if it's in biblical text, it's like, bro, you know where this is coming from. Yeah. You also claim that you're a Christian. So mm -hmm. like, how are you fighting me against something that don't? That's that's where I'm like, bro, y'all losing me because that don't make no sense to me. That's where everything kind of gets watery, especially in America, because it's like there's a lot of people who claim they're Christian. I'm like, bro, these are things that are in the Bible. So like you saying, you are excluding all the the bad news. To only receive this good stuff and then believing that because that's what it is, anybody who then brings in the bad news, they're like, whoa, whoa, how dare you? And it's like, bro, it's in there. It's You can disagree with it if you really want to, but don't act like it's not in the Bible. Like, don't act like it's not there. Don't act like it's not biblical text. Stop acting like it's not there. And that's the problem I think I really have, like, at least internally right now, where I just see people and nothing that they're saying is consistent based off what they claim they believe. And that's my problem with a lot of things going on. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah no, head. yeah, no. It's, and it's because it has nothing to do with respecting the other person. For sure. It has nothing to do with being tolerant. It has, it's really a very simple line. Wicked and godly, you know, righteous and sinful. If you promote anything that has to do with being righteous, people will hate it. People are not going to now you're a weirdo. Now you're lame. Now you're now you're uh, a fascist. Now you're, you know, a, a religious zealot. Doesn't matter what it is. You know what I mean? Now that's not I mean, just look at what's popular in the world. Right. Why do you. Th All right. Here's a here. And once you everything starts to make so much more sense when you are able to put those lenses on, like everything makes so much sense. So, like, for instance, you know, I'm sure we've all heard the whole, oh, hip hop is, you know, a machine created by, you know, Jewish people and white people to destroy the black community. Yeah, we've yeah. all heard some variation it's of that criticism. You never heard about that? You heard it? No. Nah. But oh, he, I'm not trying to do the whole American Canada thing, but like, yeah, oh, it's some, it's okay, American. All right, that's a pretty that. common like yeah. criticism, especially among people who are really big fans of like, you know, um, more lyrical or woke rap. They'll look at like, you know, really? Yeah. They'll, they'll oh, wow. look at the fact that what's topping the charts is, you know, violent rap, rapping about, you know, debauchery and drug use and selling drugs and killing people. They say, oh, yeah. Why is that as a top? It's because white people are trying to destroy the black community. Mm -hmm. And for a while, I'm like, well, you know, they are the ones making the most money. They're the ones who run the labels. And, mm -hmm. you know, this stuff is pretty destructive in the black community. But. When you look at who is going to these shows, the, it's usually a sea of white people. It is, yeah. Everybody likes this at music. Rap? At rap? Yeah. yeah. Every, yeah. When yeah. you go to like a Plague Boy Cardi or Uzi or Little Baby or... We like it. It's, it's, a, it's a, not... Yeah, I mean, I was with you. It's not even I'm not a, saying black people aren't going. They're definitely going. Clothes. But I'm saying it's not that this is only appealing to the black community. Interesting. Rap. The rest of yeah. The there's the a, it's not even 65. Kanye been on... He's been on record saying that like 80 to 70% of people he sell to... Um, in concerts of oh, white wow. people. I mean, the, the concerts I went to, most of them are smaller. Mm. Uh, I went to the weekend concert last week. That was the most diverse concert I've ever been to in my life. Mm -hmm. Crazy. No, like, if that, that's my well, point, though. But, okay, so that's, that's my an interesting point. point. Is everybody that. likes it. Yeah, and yeah. it's not that anyone's trying to destroy the black community. Is that rap music is the most evil kind of music they're in. And so it appeals to to the flesh. So I've, I've been thinking about this a lot. We've had previous conversations about this in the past. I'm starting to put more of the responsibility on the people listening because the labels are, they take the face and they'll like, they'll just fucking throw reference tracks at the people that can sell it. So just keep throwing at Cardi B's and the Nicki Minaj's and the little babies. Cause they're going to be able to sell the music because the they drugs. have the, the brand for it. But it's like, if you don't rap about drugs, wealth, like the five most generic things, people are going to, oh, that's lame. You know, he's not really talking about anything. Because I, I grew up, my favorite artist is Lupe Fiasco. So I grew mm, up solid. on more lyrical music. Yeah. Um, but 
I remember I like I used to despise people who listen to like more pop or like melodic music. Mm-hmm. I just kind of grew to be more open minded, and now I listen to a lot of that music too. Yeah, but I always thought like the artists are people before they get into the music industry Mm -hmm. and the music industry makes them into a specific type of person that's going to sell the most records. Yeah. So like if you're, if you're a female, they're going to make sure you're twerking all the time Mm -hmm. that you're rapping about uh, the type of money in your lifestyle about um, uh, just all different types of shit. And it's the shit that sells. So at what point are the people fucking listening, not responsible for the content they're consuming? You're always responsible. In my opinion, Cause like we we grew well no you're a little bit younger than us but we grew up off of the concept of like I don't want to say we made them but like J Cole Kendrick um, and Drake were not like well maybe Drake more or less but J Cole and Kendrick were doing everything opposite of what was being popular at that time and the only way that at that time you could really and truly listen to them and blow them up I guess was like listen to them off of Dat Piff like that's the only way you had to like mm-hmm. go out there and actually seek their music and listen to it and get them to where they are right now so, so like, because of that we yeah we have control it's been proven several times even Kanye even when Kanye was coming out he was not rapping like everybody else was rapping people there had to be a subsection that would have followed him to blow him up because he wasn't doing the same shit 50 Cent Nelly Eminem like he wasn't rapping that type of shit yeah I kind of just think about music like videos on YouTube it's the it's same like, thing gonna, the, the, everyone just makes the type of video that's the meta right now mm. and the meta in music is what all the artists are gonna be so if the meta is drugs but there are people rapping about a street life they've never lived fast, yeah. right because that's the meta so I just think the meta changes and the artists are gonna change with it but they're really only appealing to the lowest common denominator, which is just the average person and mm-hmm. what they might find interesting to listen to. But if that, but the only reason why I still say it's the, or, and I know we're saying the same thing, but it's because like, for example, even on YouTube, like Nelk and them, they don't get pushed. They don't get pushed by YouTube. So the only way, yeah, they do. well, not, not all the, not as much as, um, they what is it, monetized, is it but what is the other, pushed. is it Nelk or is it is somebody else that like very rarely gets pushed and they get like millions of views? I, I mean, go, Nelk's videos are all oh, demonetized, yeah. but they get, I mean, they get millions of views per video. But are they are they constantly? Because I've never heard of Nelk until I think you said it, what? and I had to go no, look them up. I, yeah, I just learned thing. about Nelk really? recently. Yeah. People just said it. We, we asked two people. We like, had to they search. They didn't know who they were. Yeah, it you, depends, but you ask it in Atlanta. I'm from Canada, and they're from Canada, so I guess. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah, just, but, but here, like, you have to search them up to actually for them to pop up on your feed. Like they've never popped up on my feed before they until I think. Are. It's, it's highly unlikely they have millions of views per video and they're not being pushed on homepages. Yeah, it's and suggested. Like, it's the like next to impossible. I think there's, I think, no, I think you're both, like, I don't think they get, here's, they don't get pushed, but they're not being suppressed. So, like, mm-hmm. in the sense of, like, if they're, if they're, I mean, conservative content is never going to make it to the front page of YouTube. But if you start watching, I guess. Yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah. But the arrangement that those like large yeah, companies sure have with YouTubers is different than like us like just Which making YouTube videos. Oh, yeah. You know, it did money money runs the world, bro. And so it's like, you know, I, I think what happens is if your algorithm identifies that you're into certain things, it will recommend like a Nelk if you're into videos like Nelk, if you watch their content a lot, you know, it's going to recommend their new videos. If you're subscribed, it'll recommend them. So in that way, I think that's how they're still pulling the millions of views. Yeah. Um, but I bet they're not going to said. be on the like front page of YouTube, yeah. you know, they're not gonna be yeah, the face of YouTube rewind, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like But Corey said the same thing. I don't know if y'all watched that video he just uploaded where mm-hmm. Corey was like saying, I'll I'll get a break from YouTube, I'll come back. And I'll start turning, and then YouTube will just start suppressing me, or he'll like age restrict the video of mine, yeah. even though like everybody else is doing the exact same game. Mm-hmm. So then he was like, he literally like contacted YouTube or his rep contacted him, and he, well, he contacted his rep first. He said, "Why do you think this guy age restricted?" And he was like, "Oh, maybe because the last thirty seconds it was dealing something with self deletion." So then, what's the um, Markiplier did the exact same video with the exact same scene in it, and it was up. So then he was like, all right, well, this is happening the exact same thing. And he said he had a bunch of other examples of this. This is the reason why he keeps going on and off of YouTube because he feels like he's being suppressed. But even when he feels like he's being suppressed, which I think rightfully so, he can feel that way, he still somehow gets a large audience who still goes out of their way to search him up and find him all the time. It's not. There's just no way his traffic sources aren't browse features and suggested. There's no way you get that much views and it's not those two. He's, he I'm, not saying, I'm not saying he's not getting it. I'm not, what I'm saying is for somebody his size, it should be way more than what it is. And so if, if somebody's age, they're age restricting my video on Age restricting does slow it down. Exactly. A demonetization, I don't think slows it down. But he, he got age restricting on his video. Yeah, age restriction cuts it off at the source. 
Like, if you're getting 100% of views, you're down to, like, 5%. Like, whatever you were previously getting, your shit gets age-restricted, it's done. Yeah. Delete it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's See, bad. that's what he felt like. So then in, in that scenario, the only way that he can continue to get views is if, like, the audience themselves go out of their way to find him. So I, I'm a firm believer, like, especially... When like I'm saying something, hmm. and the only way that they can actually gen- like resonate with people is if they feel close in general, genuine with it. Mm-hmm. So they're going to continue to just rock with me, regardless of what I do, what I upload, where I upload it at, et cetera, et cetera. It's part of the reason why I think RDC exists because they were saying things seven years ago. Being like being that deep into anime was not like a popular thing, and the only reason why you even where we are right now is because it just became more relatable and people are being more open with it. So I think that's. Why I believe, like, bro, it's just the audience. The audience is always going to pick what they want to watch. Now, I do think niggas is bots, though. So niggas is going to do whatever everybody else is doing. But it's still their culpability, their responsibility to be think outside the mind and actually watch some shit they want to watch. Not because everybody else is telling them to watch that shit. But they bots, though. So you think the labels are to be held responsible or the artists themselves for what you're saying is destroying the black community or just any community in general? I think it's just the nature of mankind is responsible. I think without, there is no, the Bible says there isn't a single good person on the face of the earth. The flesh is wicked and evil. Now it also says that God writes his law on our hearts. That's what gives us a sense of morality. But without the guidance of God, you know, we're most times going to go towards pleasing the flesh, pleasing our wicked nature. So it's really just supply and demand. The reason why all of the black, you know, female rappers twerk in every video is not because anyone's trying to promote something. It's it's because that's what people want to see. Men want to see women half naked shaking their butts. The reason why people listen to m- music about murder and, and it's because the flesh loves it. The flesh likes it. No one is tricking you into liking it. No one's like brainwashing you into liking it this is what your flesh is like it's the same reason no one tricked you into liking cake and hamburgers you know what i'm saying like that wasn't the government trying to make you unhealthy you're wired to like those things and then you know if you feed that you're just going to keep going at it more and more and more mm-hmm. and so it's like that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, like OnlyFans is not popular because someone is tricking people into liking OnlyFans. It's popular because dudes like naked women. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And without the righteousness that gets put in you by God, you're not going to like you're not going to despise it. You might avoid it out of discipline. And because, you know, psychologically, oh, this is bad for me. I know that's where a lot of people are with porn, right? They like porn, but they know it's bad for them, so they avoid it. But when the Holy Spirit enters within you, you start to hate it. You start to despise sin. You feel me? So there's a it's a difference between self-control and divine intervention. You feel me? So like. That's that's really what it comes down to. I saw I saw you tweet about OnlyFans. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Yeah, um, something like that. And it had a lot of people in the replies. I don't I don't really check my replies. Uh, honestly, I think some people were like surprised by your take in that like it just presented a new perspective. We've been talking about a little bit mm. the past couple of months on just the monetization of loneliness online. Yeah. You know, like I think the phones and the social media. I feel like an old person saying this, but it's making people further apart. Um, cause you're spending so much time just locked into your fucking phone and we all know people in our lives that can't get off their fucking phone. Yeah. You'd be having a conversation dead in their face and they'd be on TikTok just scrolling. But that's Terrible. how they're designed though. They're just the smartest people on the planet are being hired to hook you on these apps cause that's how they monetize. And your attention is one of the most valuable things you can give. So when you just give it away for free and you're not focusing on something that could benefit you, you're doing yourself a disservice. But going back to the loneliness. Yeah. I always thought it was fascinating that like there's so many things you can do to fix the short-term solution of being lonely Mm -hmm. that it doesn't even make sense for you not that it doesn't make sense but it's difficult to make the decision to do the hard work to avoid that like to overcome the social anxiety and all the other negative feelings associated with like putting in the effort to get to know people and building good relationships. And I think OnlyFans is one of the ways, because it's so weird how it's celebrated to me. Because if we're going to celebrate it, but not talk about, like, the think about how it's being monetized. The, the Half of the revenue that the women make, or men, or whoever the fuck is on there, is the messages. 
So assuming I'm talking about like just the sexual content, because like most people that aren't doing the sexual content, would just get a Patreon or something like that. Sure. Um, but like there's something so like sad and like hollow about you paying money to see photos and videos, but more importantly, you pay money to communicate to this person that your Isn't main, your main appeal to them is just that they're attractive. Yeah. You don't know them as a person. It's not like they changed your life in any way or did something. They're just attractive and you're willing to pay to talk to them. And the craziest part about it is you're not even talking to them because when your account gets big enough, they just start hiring people to talk on your behalf. Right. So all of it kind of just feels so hollow and it feels like in the celebration of like entrepreneurship is what it's become that like people lose sight of how like tough that is for the people actually spending money because if nobody ever talks about those people, we just celebrate the people that are making the money, but mm-hmm. the money came from somewhere mm-hmm. and it's from a lot of lonely mo- mo- majority men. Yeah. I'm, I'm lucky. I never fell into that loop. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's we talk about fuck, it. Though. It's, it's really fucked. It's fucked because especially when, and that's, I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm just in the stage where, because I, especially because I watch that um, H3HD video where I'm like, man, like, it's just so, it's so inconsistent with the way that people are judging morality. And like, yeah, they just go, they go on, or they go online almost like monthly, just flaunting how many men they're deceiving. Men that we all already know are lonely, desperate, like men that clearly need some form of guidance or fixing, they are willing to just pin them down and keep them lonely and to financially benefit off of them, knowing that they're not actually even giving them what they're even looking for. It's the craziest shit in the world, and nobody says anything about it, but I'm supposed to believe y'all niggas is more moral than everybody else because y'all just decide on X, Y, Z, but y'all are okay with OnlyFans. Like, to me, that shit is, like, weird to me. You should start a club. A what? Start a club for the lonely men. The lonely men club? Yeah, oh, boy. Be. That's a sad, yeah, that's... smelly club. Don't they call that? I ain't gonna lie. They'll, they'll just call them niggas incels. And that's, what they, that's what they call them. Yeah. Yeah, they just call them incels. That's, that's literally what they call them on the internet. difference, though. You, you know it's a problem. It'll be the difference. You know what, though? But we, it, we, the blame isn't on the women doing the OnlyFans, though. No, no one is, no, no one no, 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 forces no. you to pull out that card. For sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, these men, I don't feel bad for these dudes, I'll be honest with you. I feel bad for them from the context of, like, they're the looking thing. for satisfaction in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel bad for them. In the, they are doing exactly what they want to, to do. do. It makes them happy. Yeah, they are doing, it makes them the closest thing they can get to what they believe happening. I get that I, for adults, you know? but for the little boppers that are just taking their parents' credit card, yeah. they don't know better. That's well, true. Know, That's true. The only, they only better. well, they do, they do. Their conscience is telling <laughs> them. Said they do. But like they're they're also at the same time you're they weren't raised properly. The certain protections weren't put in place to protect them for from sure. that. For you know? Sure. That's that's but it's not but the, a kid, you can't just watch that on your phone. Mm-hmm. You have to go to a club, like a saloon or something, and see girls. a saloon. What, you know? nigga? You're not that. <laughs> a I just imagine. Saloon, yeah, I just a saloon imagine is wood, crazy. Wooden doors. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's crazy. A saloon is nuts, nigga. <laughs> you're in the middle of Atlanta finding saloons. No, you're not, nigga. You're going down. Yeah, Boy, put a gold <laughs> coin on the counter. <laughs> that's crazy. No, I I agree with you. Yeah, but I think the the part where I'm like, bro, that's fucked up is when again they're not even getting what they want. Because I agree, bro. If you two consenting adults doing what y'all want to do yeah i'm 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 i may not resp- i may not um agree with it but once more i'm i'm understanding what you're doing like but it's not consenting at that point if the nigga is paying for something and he think he getting it and she's not giving that nigga what he paid for that's not consenting and we all know for a fact that the roles are reverse what do you mean it would be a problem or if he's like if paying, she's not doing messaging him like yeah well. if she's not messaging him and it's somebody else if it's a man messaging him but you know what the fuck that part That's is? Not, how is that? He didn't consent to a man message him. Matter of fact, there's times where they'll send, they'll, he'll pay for something, send, and um, she's supposed to send him something, and it's not what he actually paid for. It's something completely different. Like, that happens very often. And matter of fact, women will go on podcasts and brag about that and shit. Who fault is that? It's really the guy's fault for That's spending the bread. If you, if you hear this, that it's not her text you all the time, you should just know that this could not be her, but that happiness inside him makes him believe no matter who's typing I'm gonna think it's her. That's what he paid for. Yeah, for sure. That's his. Fault. I just think. I just think it's. I'm understandable. I just think it's inconsistent the way that everybody views things, especially when they're tossing around morality decisions. Nobody is moral, bro. 
Mm. N- nobody is morally upright. Mm. That's what I truly believe. Okay. Everyone is doing what is convenient to them. For sure. That's, that's what it is. Theory. That's, that's what it all comes down that's to. That's my convenient, convenient theory. theory. Yeah. yeah. Whatever is convenient to yeah. you and something you believe in strongly, you will compromise on it for the sake of convenience. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So like your moral code is based on what is convenient and applicable to you. And then even that code is likely to change if you're ever in a position where it is in your benefit to change it. The only pathway to having a very strong moral compass that is outside of what works for you and what is convenient to you is through God. Mm. That's what I believe. Yeah. That's what I believe. Mm. Yeah. Because why do you think that like, just out of curiosity, why do you think that people in this country have like um, deviated from religion? Why do I think that people have deviated from, I mean, from the beginning of time, Uh, Man has hated God. That is what it means to be sinful. It's the reason why God, um, you know, cleaned the earth, you know, with the flood. When he sent the great flood and killed everybody and pretty much started over. He will. The Bible says that God had a um, a repentant heart for creating humanity right before he he like wanted to just scorch earth. He he was so because God is incredibly disgusted with sin our sinful nature he like he despises it he hates it so much and so he wanted to just clean the earth with noah and so he did that and then um he wanted to do it again with moses and then the only reason he didn't was because um moses reminded god of the covenant that he made with abraham and so he because he delivered the sons of israel from Egypt, I know, like, I'm saying things now that some people just don't even know what's going on. All right, short story. God created a man and woman, Adam and Eve. They had kids, and through that descendants, right, uh, eventually came a man named Abraham, right? Uh, Hundreds of years later came Mm -hmm. a man named Abraham. Um, And then, huh? Know the song? Nah, what's the song? Father Abraham. Have many sons? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then so like eventually, right? Um, and actually, Abraham was a descendant of Noah, right? Remind me, I believe. Yeah, I'm a second, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If or is Noah a descendant of Abraham? Not, Does anyone? Because no, 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 no. you guys, I mean, I'm Muslims are supposed know. to be pretty tapped in with the Old Testament, with like the first uh, five books. No, I'm not saying you had it right the first time. Yeah, right. Uh, I just yeah, know I that. Know. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't know. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember that. which one came first. No, I, I mean, we could, this just. is something we could look it up. I'm trying to give like but, the spark notes of the story. But I understand. But, but basically, you're saying no, like, no, no, because I, I want to get to like the. I'm not saying historically. I mean, like there was a time in this country where people were way more religious, though. No, I wouldn't say even just ten years ago. I only 10, 15 years ago, people were way more. Yeah, I'm religious. talking more like recently. Oh, like literally fifteen years ago. I could be wrong. I wasn't in this country 15 years ago. But it was really because they were, but they were also at like that time. Yeah, Noah came before Abraham. Noah came before Abraham. Yeah. yeah. All right. But um, yeah, the point is that people have always hated God, bro. It's not, people are not just now getting away from God. People have always hated God. And, um, but there was a time, there was a time even recently, like in the, in the last millennia where uh, religion led and then everything else followed. So there were countries that would lead with, like, would go to war over religion um, and faith. And I was even watching a video about Spain and how, like, uh, the Catholicism and the Protestants in, in Europe, they had a whole bunch of back and forth every time there was. So there was times, even in recent history, where people, like, led with uh, their faith. That's what I'm saying. I like, mean, right now, there are definitely countries where that happened, but this is not one of them. I was about to say, I just think that that may be more so North American leaning because i think a lot of other places yeah they're still very heavy all over the world but yeah. everybody is, is still super religious bro think so yeah here you think here in the states yeah every here, here's what i mean by it okay and again as a christian i believe that there's only one true god and it's the god of the bible right and when i say everyone hates god i mean everyone hates that god except those who are saved by him, who have received the gift of grace, right? You know, nobody, everybody naturally hates him. And, he, but some people receive his mercy and have their eyes opened. And so they receive his truth. 
But everything else, every other version of religion, you can find within it acts of hatred towards God. So even when you bring up those wars between like the protest Protestants and like, you know, various sects of Christianity, those weren't Christians spilling blood in the name of God. Anyone, God doesn't command anyone to spill blood in his name. Mm -hmm. You know, there were instances in the Bible, in the old Testament where his chosen people had to go to war because people who are praising false gods and are committing crimes against God and humanity there, there was going, they had to interact. And so God is going to keep his people. And if they're coming to fight, he's going to help you in war. But God has never just called for the murder of people, you know, just the slaughter of people just for the sake of disobeying his law, except his people. Like there were laws that he instituted amongst his people. And if you broke these laws, then some of these crimes held the death penalty. But so when you hear of Christians killing people in the name of God, they're not Christians, right? And then when you hear of any other religious people going to war in the name of God, they are not doing it for God. They're doing it for themselves. Usually unknowingly, they're serving Lucifer, Satan, because anyone that doesn't serve God is serving the devil. You know, you're either a child of God or a child of devil, according to the Bible. And so... Um, and when, when you hear that term, like son of God, child of God, it is referring to the fact that you, who are you in alignment with? Who are you in agreement with? So that's what he means when he says you're a child of the devil. It means that you do his bidding. When you're a child of God, you do God's bidding. And so, um, that is per se. So we still see that today, just because we haven't slapped the label of religion on like the LGBT stuff. It is a religion. You know, when you abortion, all of that, 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 this is a, they have a religious, because we already acknowledge that there's a lot of hypocrisy, right? Mm -hmm. In that community, when you look at it from just the lens of people being tolerant. Yeah. It, there's a lot of hypocrisy there it, it, because it isn't about tolerance. It is their religion and they believe in it wholeheartedly and they don't care if it's, if it's contradict, if there are any contradictions, they don't care if, you know, it's, it, they're not being fair to other people with other beliefs. That is their religion. They just haven't put a title on it. Yeah, this brother's spitting right now, bro. Yeah, I this think so. Every, everybody is still super religious because spitting, we all have a desire for God, but a lot of us, knowingly or unknowingly, break the first and second commandment, which is to place another God before the true God. Or to make a God in your of your own liking, right? Thou shall not make um, worship an idol. Thou shall not make a graven image. A lot of us make uh, that God in our head. So we might not pray to a, a, a statue, but we shape God into being the way we want him to be. You might have heard people say this. Oh, if God was real, then these babies wouldn't be dying. That's you saying that's you deciding how God is supposed to be. God is the way he is. And anything that he does is right because he's in charge. You feel me? So that is what is going on. You know what I'm saying? Who you better? Who you better? Like before I would say something. I was just going to talk about convenience theory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The more I think about it, the more it's like true. I think someone's character should be judged based on how far they're willing to go out of their own convenience for something they believe in. Mm. That's a good way to put it. The, what I was going to say was, um, okay, there's two things. First, I agree. And to kind of answer your question or give a more palatable answer, I still think it happens now where the concept of religion kind of gets dispelled because people think that their interpretation of it is odd. So when you sat there and said that their interpretation of religion was to justifiably kill a bunch of people, even though it doesn't say that, mm -hmm. that was their their concept of what they thought religion was or their their protection of it at least mm -hmm. so as time continues to progress and we become more progressive those things that we justified prior to due to religion even if it does definitely say it in the bible or whatever biblical text that you may follow by um we get to a point where every single time we it gets brought up it's like ah well no no da 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 because for example like there are very fair and clear guidelines let me like guidelines but an outline of what men and women are do in, in biblical texts. Mm -hmm. But in today's world, 
if you try to say that to justify your beliefs, it's like, oh, well, that's not progressive. So we're just write our own die, um, our own rules to what we believe that it's supposed to be. And it's almost as if like, and I've thought about this as well. I was like, why do y'all think, why do y'all call a lot of people who do things that are immediately against Christianity? Why don't y'all just create your own religion? Why not just do it? Like why claim that you're a Christian? If you know for a fact, you don't believe the things that are in the Bible, like just literally do your own because it's starting to feel like that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Like what they're doing is their own religion. And then they justified what they're saying, but not being tolerant of the people because they, but less that's literally legitimately what they believe in. Mm -hmm. They legitimately believe the things that they say. So why even label yourself as a Christian? If you know for a fact or whatever, why label yourself a Muslim or, or whatever you are, if you know for a fact that it's not in the text, why, why even do that? So I agree. Actually, I do think most people are actually are in terms of convenient theory. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I just feel like people, and, I, and I'm not even really, because I, I agree, we all humans, we all make mistakes, we all live through some form of conveniency. Like, nigga, I'm, like, I'm fat. Like, it's convenient for me not to work out. It's convenient for me to eat whatever First I time want. time looked up in, like, five minutes. <laughs> it's, it's convenient. <laughs> yeah, this guy, it's, right. it's convenient for me to do those things. So I'm not even really mad at people living through some form of convenience. It's the what bothers me is just not identifying that that's convenient for you, because it's it is easy for you to do those things, and it does take more discipline and hard work to abide by a certain um, form of discipline. When we had poor man podcast on here, he was telling us like religion. People, the reason why people bring up spirituality or other aspect of it is because. You trying to abide by religion, it takes a lot of discipline to do that. Mm. Like, it's not convenient to do that at all. That, that's another thing that stuck with me. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Like, if you actually wanted to live by a certain guideline or or um, some form of discipline that is aligned with morality through some form of um, religious text, that takes a lot of discipline. That is not convenient at all. It's not, it's not meant to be easy at all. So when people go around that to just try to, like, find something that is a bit more convenient for them, Again, we all do it because we're, we're human beings. We make mistakes. But just a, acknowledge it, though. Acknowledge that that's what you're doing and acknowledge how somebody else can see it through another perception. And that's what just fucking bothers me. But your conveniency is like, I think it's just so interesting. But it's still the hypocrisy behind it. Mm -hmm. At least not acknowledging that like what you're doing is out of conveniency right now. Mm hmm. Yeah. So what's uh, to get back on to your personal life? What's married life been like? I know you recently got married. You said mm -hmm. you have two kids coming out. What's what's changed in your life from when you were in a relationship with your uh, girlfriend at the time to now being a husband? Definitely one of the best decisions I've made in my life. One of the biggest blessings that God has given me, especially because he gave it to me prior to me really appreciating how much of a blessing it is. Mm -hmm. Like now that I'm a Christian man and she's fallen. So like she just fell into the Christian life. So willingly I can clearly see this was God preparing. He was like, yeah, you're not Christian now. You don't deserve this blessing now, but I'm going to give it to you because I'm going to make sure you come around and she's going to come around. And so you're going to like, you know, I could have easily, you know, if it wasn't God's grace, married a girl, a different girl who now that I'm a Christian would be fighting the whole Christian ideology. You know what I'm saying? Like she can be like, yeah, I'm not with that. I, I don't, I'm not interested in that. I, I hear you out. And that, and that would be very, you know, it being married to a Christian woman is still difficult. You know, just being married in general has its challenges. Mm -hmm. Not saying that like my marriage is hard, but I'm saying like, I can't imagine what it'd be like if my wife didn't have the same values and morals as me, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like the same moral compass. So, but yeah, man, it's been incredibly a, a huge blessing. You know, she, I, I haven't cooked or cleaned or, um, I haven't done anything that falls into the categories of, you know, female oriented gender roles that's been because i had to do it all for myself so that's freed me up to be able to focus more on work you know people like to downplay those things and like treat them as if they're demeaning or some something but it's incredibly like you're a team right the man works in the book of genesis right god says you know um by the sweat of your brow you shall eat bread for um you know you're going to work the the soil because from dust you came in to dust you shall return he was very clear what the burden of the man is he's supposed to work the one of the reasons he instituted the sabbath right which was a day of rest was because 
people were working hard every day. God commanded you to work mm -hmm. and he gave people the Sabbath so that they may rest. Um, the point is, uh, it is the man's job to work. And so when he doesn't have to cook and clean and all these other things on top of that, it makes, a lot it makes life so much easier, you know, and you can focus more on working and it, it makes re when you do get to rest. Now you can rest more completely, you know, so that's incredibly valuable. And uh, um, so that's been amazing, um, you know all the other things that people are familiar with, you know, in terms of intimacy, that's always amazing. You know, that's good. Having children, that's so rewarding. I think yeah. that, um, I think that was going to be the second thing <laughs> too, but yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's rewarding. And, um, how about this? What are, what are the top five things you enjoy out of, out of marriage life or out of your, uh, out of your uh, wife? Uh, out of my wife is, you know, she's top five characteristics or things about, you know, okay. About being have. married. The top five things about being married would definitely be, you know, she's the, huh? About no, about your wife. Top five things about your wife. About I mean, my wife, like her qualities. Yeah, like her. Okay, qualities. okay, okay. Look okay. for. Uh, all right, top five qualities. She places a lot of importance on being a good wife and mother. Okay. She places a lot that like, is very okay. important Motherly, to her. Motherly, Motherly like. like. Yeah, so like she, you yeah. For that. Yeah, so she like takes being a mom very serious and she okay. takes being a good wife very serious. Mm -hmm. Like one of the, the, the biggest insults I could ever do is e suggest in any way that she's letting me down as my wife. Mm. She, she like, she will, she does not, she is very offended by that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I have to be very careful about how I, you know, bring constructive criticism to her because it can't come off as if I think you're doing a bad job. It's mm. got to come off as like, hey, I would like you to consider, you know, doing this like this mm -hmm. or, you know, approaching this like that, um, you know. Uh, so there's that next quality is she is incredible. She's my biggest fan. She's my number one fan. Supportive. Like she like I, she makes me feel Supportive. like I'm Superman. Supportive. Yeah, yeah. She makes me feel That's like I'm tough. Superman. She makes me feel like, you know, I'm always right. She makes me feel like not in terms of me, but like let's say I get in an argument or a debate with Oh, you yeah, you're all oh, you you got him, babe. Like, yeah, you did so good in that debate, you know? Like she's always like super like always takes my side, always never like you know, if and I'm hard on myself. Like I'll go to them like, man, I feel like they got me here or you they go got me the there. And she'll be like you. Huh? <laughs> like you go to the gym and don't score. She'll like She'll be like, yeah, he was like the traveling. The best yeah, yeah, traveling. <laughs> traveling the whole time. That's yeah, my the referee wife. wasn't calling yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, you haven't worked out in a while, babe. Uh, you know, she was like she'll make even. excuses for me, you know. Even. That's good. And then, That's yeah, supportive. so she's very supportive. Um Mm, I guess I have to like actually rearrange everything and put this number one. The fact that she is a God fearing Christian woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that has there to be you go, number John. one. That's number one, John. God fearing Christian woman followed by, you know, takes being a wife and mother very seriously, yeah, followed by it. being very supportive, mm -hmm. followed by so she's God, very. You said God fearing, motherly quality, supportive. Yeah. Good, no, takes being a wife and mother very Mo wife, wi wifely and motherly yeah, yeah yeah so she's a great mother to our daughter and she's a great wife to me but i kind of put those yeah, together for sure, for sure um the third thing would be supportive. the supportive the fourth thing is she's a really good cook and she's very clean mm. yeah mm. so she's a cooking and hygiene yeah yeah she does a really good job at keeping the house very clean and very and she's she's an amazing cook and then five would be you know she is very um Romantic. She's very like mm. she loves to be loved on. Mm -hmm. You know okay. what I'm saying? So God fear was a given. That's not what top in the top five. I have to say. It is number one. He said it's that's number, number one. one. Oh, which one yeah. you take away? No, 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 no. So, so it's God fearing. Okay. Supportive. Right. No, no. God fearing. Great mother, mother and wife. Mother and wife is one one thing. He I did. Yeah. Okay. I got mother and wife. Uh, God fearing, supportive, cooking, hygiene, and romantic. Yeah. So cooking and cleaning, I put that in one. It is okay, and cooking then and hygiene. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then number five would be um, romantic. Yeah, yeah. she, she, she's yeah, she's very like, 
She like she loves to cuddle. She loves to like you know be loved on. Yeah, for sure. Good list. Good list. Good list. That's a good list. That is a good list. Very very good list. That's actually a great list. Great great list. Not, hey man, I, I, you know, I think mature men, we understand what, what really is value. If you tell him this, he's going to realize that it matters, but he would assume it doesn't. What, what, what? Oh, the second so, you say it, the second you say like, oh, it, like, yes, duh, that's a given. Like, that they have, a, they have an ongoing feud on whether or not looks should be in your top five. Oh, that's automatic, though. Exactly. Yeah, like you're not exactly. like that's you automatic. Think, oh my gosh, that's automatic. What if it's I not said, automatic? I said, I said, I said automatic. looks. I said looks is number six, and then number six or seven. No, Everybody's like, like no, 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 If I had to rear, if I had to rear, if I have to be honest, looks is number one. Then oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, one over God, God fearing woman. I would never. No, I would never marry an ugly God fearing woman. But she's not. You're, but again, Thank we're yeah. nobody. Nobody's saying she's ugly. It's just not a top five. Not a, no, I don't understand why she's not. I don't understand. She's ugly. No, it's what the fuck are you talking? It's, it's a scale. It's a ten, one, and I'm not saying she's a, a fucking two, nigga. I'm saying is what if she if she could be an eight or a nine, you would still marry her. Okay, nigga, that's the, great. An eight yeah, or a eight nine. Or nine is, I'm, not, I'm not saying, but if you, but y'all keep jumping to ugly. I never said ugly. No, I'm saying like if I do I not, ugly. if I don't, I'm saying like if I if I don't find her attractive, if I it's don't six. find her I'm attractive, not saying, I'm not saying it's zero. I'm saying I'm not saying it's the hundredth most important thing. Yeah. I'm saying it's right outside of the top five. But he put it at one, so obviously it's very important. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, bro. If if like if you put it at like eight, you. if then, I can't get my man, my little man, to stand up. You know, when I see her, when I lay in the bed with her, you <laughs> feel me? Exactly. Like, I'm not, it's not going to go nowhere yeah, after that. I guess. You, I you guess. know what I'm saying? It's a given. He said it's automatic. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't turn I on guess. Time. It's I guess. automatic. I guess. Yeah, because, guess. like, bro, if she, I'm, bro, like, I agree with you. I'm not saying she got to be a supermodel. And I'm not saying, like, looks, like, if she's a supermodel, I would then compromise on the other things you know what i'm saying you understand you. yeah that's kind of what it means but, though. but no i'm saying no, like she gotta matter. look good what if you your number one thing is self-awareness so that means that the the other things that are there you won't be willing to compromise more on that than self-awareness no, I'm, I'm not compromising like on my takes. top five nigga i might compromise on nine fifteen on 20, are you five? five are you compromising on, on six uh Probably not, unless she's knocking okay, top five out the park. All right, whatever. It wasn't, fuck it. it wasn't six though. You bringing it down. Next episode is gonna be top five. For you. <laughs> no, it's going not. down. No, it's not. Jesus. You keep doing um, these bad takes. I'm gonna take your Lazier uh, Hayward ball. Good <laughs> <laughs> basketball signed by Jeremy Lin. Um, <laughs> no, that's Terry Rose. That's Terry Rose here. Right, as as I said, what is your what is your favorite video you ever uploaded or favorite piece of? Content? Is that in frame? Hmm. Huh? Oh, they can see it. They can see it. Okay, there. good, good, good. Yeah. Talk about all the greats. Yeah, my favorite piece of content. Uh, yeah. Um. Oh man, every new. All right, like I look at. I don't have a favorite video in terms of like reactions. Reactions sure. are reactions. For sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So really, it, it really just comes down to my more artistic videos. And whatever is my most recent artistic video is my favorite artistic video. Okay. Yeah, that's sure. really pretty right, much how it just comes out. Oh, well, we ask this question every podcast. I don't know if you could answer it, but what's your horniest moment? Um, Anytime I lay in bed with my wife. No, that's not the horniest moment. Yeah. That's the it's horniest, horniest. you've been. It's the horniest that niggas ever been. When a nigga smile at you, say, yeah. <laughs> 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 I know that's the way you yeah. want to hear. Yeah. Um, I'll put it like this. You know, uh, there was a little point after where she had the baby that, you know, you got to give... Give that thing a break, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so there was a there was like a good long like period where I ain't I ain't had no relief. Mm. And so mm. I remember the very first time that I got the green light. After that, that was like you know it was all you know like that's like, when the second one was <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> you might you're not too far off from that. <laughs> you're not too far off, but yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah, that was that was you know I remember like you know it was. It how was, how yeah. far was that? I know it's a personal question. But I'm just curious. How far was that from the pregnancy? Um, I mean, like a month, a week. 
Three days. Yeah, it was go like on. a month and change. Like, a month and change. A I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a month and change okay. for sure. Yeah, yeah, a month and change. Mm. Uh, I guess the the because I'm pretty sure you're not gonna answer the other one. Like your biggest simp moment, your biggest down bad moment. Question two. After that one. Okay, biggest simp moment, biggest down bad moment. Like the kind where it's like if you randomly think about it and you alone, you're like ah or like yeah, yeah something like that. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um. Uh, Ha! Uh, I mean, I don't really be getting those chills anymore. Those like ugh, moments, like I remember, like mm, it would have to. I told animations about all my worst moments. There was this one time where uh, there was this like girl that I started talking to, and uh, I sent her like a bunch of flowers. Aww. Yeah. And uh, one kind or like variations, like I sent her like too many flowers, bro. I sent her too many flowers, okay. like, okay. yeah, like I, bad. yeah, Flower I sent her more stuff with it. No, here's where it gets bad. This oh, is a, I, all right, bad. all right, yeah, all right. I sent her like five dozen roses, bro. Jesus, Damn. 60 Damn. roses, oh, yeah. Lord. I've sent her five dozen roses, and uh, um. Uh, this is hard. This is hard to talk about. That's hard to talk about. All right. I'll just be straight up from. So we started talking off Tinder. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And I was on vacation in Jamaica and uh, we were FaceTiming like every night, bro. Mm -hmm. You're right. Really like, I don't know if y'all have ever done that where you developed a relationship or rapport with a girl mostly through FaceTime initially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and I'm like, you know, every day and we're doing like the rhythm felt right. You know, I'll hit her up. Good morning. One day, the next day she hit me up. Good morning. You know what I'm saying? Like it felt like, oh, something's building. That yeah. rapport is building. And like, I'm like, I've, I haven't met this girl in person yet. You feel me? We're just talking online and over text and FaceTime and like it's building up, building up and like you're starting to anticipate it more and more yeah. and like, you know, like she's sending all the right emojis to make you feel like she's really into it and that. And so I, I was like, man, I really want to wow this girl. I really want to like, I want to like knock her. Huh? You get off any emojis? No, it was just like, you know, like all the signs that. I mean, until you can get physical verification that she's interested. Better, certain emojis, like no, a, a but like you know, what I'm saying like you talking to a girl, she send you kissy emojis and heart emojis. It's the next best thing to that, the real thing. You feel me? If you're only being able to interact over phone, yeah, them emojis count for a lot. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So sure. it's like, so it's like I was fe really thinking, oh yeah, no, I got this in the bag. Yeah, you know, we going as soon as we meet in person, it's going to be fireworks, you know what I'm saying? And so like it's like maybe a few days before I'm supposed to get back and then I sent her like five dozen roses like to like her apartment. And uh, you know, at first she was like super like oh my like uh, Super like happy about it, right? Like you know, like sending me videos and da da da. Like her her friend, she like had a girlfriend who was like a roommate. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, she's so jealous, da da, da whatever. Me, I'm thinking, oh yeah, I did that there. Oh, that good. was big. Right there. That was good. That was big right there. Yeah, that was a good move right there. And so I get back and we set up the first date and we go on the first date and it went horrible. Tough. Horrible. How horrible. It was just like there was no chemistry at all. No chemistry at all, bro. Jeez. And uh, like, how much it cost? Be honest. How much? I couldn't even tell you now, bro. Like, I couldn't remember, but it had to have been at least like, I mean, a dozen roses. It wasn't Valentine season, but still, a dozen roses in the off season. That's still like. That's still you looking at at least I'm imagine like fifty dollars. Hey, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. so and you, you can deliver it too. Yeah, yeah, we exactly. That's so it's about like three hundred. Yeah, right? yeah, that's yeah, what I'm thinking. Yeah, I probably yeah. spent a cool three hundred on that, right? Damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so you yeah. put a note on there, huh? You put a note on there. You have to, bro. Like, yeah, like yeah. I put oh, a little, like oh, you know, yeah. Man, you know, I didn't write her like a, a poem or nothing, but like I definitely I think. I might have put like a unique note on each like 
thing. You, you know what I'm saying? Like keep them fresh so they last longer. I mean, they you come with that. It's included in the package. It's included in the package. But you know, I don't know. I might have upgraded for the vase. I don't remember. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, yeah. Yeah, bro. I don't, bro. It was too much money. It was it. It was the amount of money that I would then go on to spend over the course of like a year on a girl. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Like three hundred dollars. Like if it. Oh, you spend that in a year on a girl? Yeah, if she's not like my girlfriend. Oh. I, but I'm, you know, I'm talking about a year of dates Damn, and you know, and like things like that. Feel. Yeah, what? That's a budget. Yeah, <laughs> depends how much you did, I guess. I need to, yeah, because I'm not year? taking her. Let, bro, like I went from night. that. Let me tell you, bro. I went from that. Like my peak, like red pill. I was like, I was, I was, I was moving. I was moving grimy, bro. Talk about I'll be peak honest. Red pill is crazy. Yeah, no, no, no. Like what my, are you doing? my peak red pill ideology. I'm like, you know, I built a rotation. I like did all of the like red pill things. You know what I'm saying? Like, so who don't pay. Like, like you don't like. It got to the point. It's like out of rule. It's like I don't feed you before I, you know, get intimate with you. Mm-hmm. Like it got. To, it went from. Spending three hundred dollars sending roses to a girl I ain't never met in person to, if I don't, if I haven't gotten a chance to lie down with you, you not eating off my wallet. Hell yeah, you know what mm. I'm saying? Like first, <laughs> you'll eat like real fir- beat beat. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. it got to the point where it's like first date is liquids only. You know what I'm saying? Jeez. Whether that's tea Jeez. or alcohol or what liquids only. <laughs> You know wow. what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it's Wait, like how, 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 how deep is this rotation? It's like five, three, I seven. I mean, the deepest was multiple. The deepest was multiple. multiple so I mean, I don't got to get into the weeds. I don't have to how get into the weeds. I don't have to get into the weeds was with it. it. But it was a starting five, though. I don't have to get into the weeds. <laughs> no, I'm just saying how tall, how tall, I like how how good was your team? Like, how was good was it? There was a basketball team right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like NBA what champions or like fringe I mean, playoffs. I mean, you know how teams are. You got yeah. star players, and then you got you got <laughs> role <laughs> players. <laughs> That's great. But yeah, all of that was wicked and awful, and 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 it was empty and <laughs> hollow, and nothing about it was good. And if I could take it yeah. all back, I how would. long did that period last? Uh, pro- oh boy, about eighty-two games. I'm probably not. Oh boy, <laughs> about a season. Yeah, about, about a season. season. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. definitely, I was like, I would say I was full on. When I instituted the no feeding, like the no food thing, that probably went on for like, that probably went on for just over a year before I got into a serious relationship. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. like the red pill version of like the 90 day rule. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like I had a three date rule, all of that. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, if I, if it, and you stuck to it no matter what, no matter what. And the only re- the only condition, I mean, I shouldn't even be talking about this because Jesus, that's what I'm preaching Boy, now. Yeah, this is the past. But yeah, it was like I was I was on that energy. I was on that timing. And, um, you know, and, it, you know, that was that was that was what that season. You feel mm-hmm. me? That was that season of my life. And you moved on from that. Man. Uh, yeah. He was talking about you had to wait a month. I was curious about this because I never asked somebody personally. Um, so, like, what is it like afterwards? Like. After the baby, like it feels the same. I don't notice any difference personally. No difference? Yeah, it feels just the same. No way, didn't this feel different. He's not gonna say this. that regardless yeah. on a pod, huh? He, bro, he was, God made it. No, I'm just, I'm just you know what I'm saying. I was always curious, like, yeah, I thought it had to feel. Is it gotta be, or it's like this has a month. Have you ago, never, right? you never had sex with a pregnant woman, huh? Like when a woman. Not all you love. Not all you. You never had sex with like a woman who's already had a child. <laughs> You just know. That's not what you said. I know I did not know. That's but I'm, that's not what I meant to say. I, that's what he meant. That's, that's what he meant. That's, 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 that's what he meant. But that's what I meant, though. Yeah, like, he, you know, three yeah, pranks. <laughs> <laughs> but you never yeah. had sex with a woman who had a child before? We like, with the baby bump? Yeah. We just... <laughs> just, uh, just <laughs> nah. Um. <laughs> but you had, you, had, you had sex with a woman who had a child before. So Yeah, you, but it wasn't like... Right after, like oh, I see what you're the saying. Right, like right, okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. The kid's old. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Right, right after it happened, like you look great, John. I just realized, like you look really defined today, man. 
Oh, appreciate you. Yeah, I've been seeing, I've I've been seeing you on my homepage about. recently a lot. Huh? It's how John got Aki. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Thanks. Um, I guess I guess the I guess the last the last thing I want to ask is like, do you ever feel like because of the transition, you gotta be more a bit more um, responsible for for some of your terminology, man? Because you know the thing that really kind of blew you up over the past six months. Was the tweet, man? You know the tweet that went crazy. The tweet, man. right? There's been a few what? though. It's been a few. There was the one. Yeah. You know what tweet we talking? No, about. It, the 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 um one about my daughter can't be. Oh, can't that. Be. Yeah. oh yeah. we didn't even talk about that. Yeah, can't be. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was like, yeah. <laughs> Look at what you know. I, yeah, I said, yeah. It's impossible for my daughter to get. Ripped. That's what I said. Do you believe that, like wholeheartedly, still? Now I do. Yeah, you do. Now I do. But oh. it, it's thank. I'm thankful. All right, here's what I'll say. That interaction between us mm -hmm. and you guys, like that, was kind of the crux of the video y'all made. The the biggest like mm -hmm. criticism y'all had that played a huge role in me giving my life to God because really? yeah, because it made me think about the fact that it's like it's presidents. That get assassinated. Mm -hmm. I don't have secret service level protection over my family. And no, I don't lock my wife and daughter in a basement, you know, and feed them to, under the door, you mm -hmm. know? So it's like, <laughs> how do you pre really prevent someone? The energy, I was trying to give the energy like, this is such a priority to me to raise my daughter both, like, to be comfortable telling your wife, no, you can't go here at this time of night with the baby. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, or no, it's not okay when, when she's 16. No, you can't go to the mall by yourself at 8 p.m., you know, with your stupid friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, being comfortable and, and laying the groundwork for her to understand that no means no, and you, I'm just being protective and all of that. And I was trying to do with the energy as well as, like, I mean, is there anything worse from the perspective of both, you know, her and a, a father than a man, you know, assaulting your daughter like that? And so it's like, if it's okay for me to say, oh, this is the energy I'm putting out here. I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm 30, da, 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 da. Why can't I put out there? Like, you might not hit a million, be a million. I'm a, like, when dudes t tweet out, I'm going to be, a, I'm going to touch a million before I touch 30. Mm -hmm. Like, no one looks at that. Like, if you say anything against that, you're a hater. Yeah. But if I say, oh, this can't, this, this horrible thing that I never want to have to my daughter can never happen. Now like, I'm going to make that a priority. You know in the in your mind that yes, like you're not God. You know what I'm saying? Like things can happen. For but sure. like that was just the energy I'm putting out there. I think everyone understood the energy because Nah, because some people think, no, I don't no, think I, I, people I, understood no, the energy of wanting to protect your daughter. But that's not how they Yeah, that's not how it was interpreted. It was interpreted it. as it like people tried to turn it, spin it into I'm like blaming women who are victims of of like yeah. oh, you I, know? Did not, I didn't see that part of the conversation yeah, yeah. Wow. that was how yeah. that's how people try to spin it it's like oh so you're blaming women who get for the fact that they got I'm like no yeah, that's not what I'm saying I'm saying I've made it a top priority to institute a culture within my household and to institute certain security put certain securities in place to make this thing almost impossible there are things that can be so like you can make something so unlikely that it might as well be impossible. Granted, you know, it can't be impossible, but all of that aside, all of that was wrong. The way I was thinking about it was wrong. Mm -hmm. And you guys help me to realize that because like I said, people who, you know, spend tens of thousands of dollars a month to have professionals protect them, they get touched. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't be every, only one person, right? Only one entity one being can be everywhere all at once and carry the kind of authority and power to protect somebody to that degree. And that's God. And so I had to come to terms with that. And then I, I realized that I'm not living a life where I, I can, you know, garner that kind of favor from God, where I can, you know, rely upon God to protect my daughter like that because I was not living an obedient life. So you and feel so like you have to earn it. It's not about earning. The book of James says that, you know, um, do not expect 
favor from God if you're not being obedient to him, essentially. Mm -hmm. Right? It says don't expect any favor from God. And so, you know, um, I was I came to the conclusion like I want this to be a reality. I want this to be a reality that this is not going to happen to my daughter. And God promises to give you that which you ask for. He talks about the power of, you know, the prayers of, you know, faithful Christians. And, uh, you know, like in the book of James, again, it uses the example of like how Elijah was an earnest, you know, faithful servant of God. And when he prayed that it wouldn't rain upon the land. It didn't rain for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And then when he prayed for it to rain, it rained upon the land and the land was fruitful. Right. And so when you ask for things that are in alignment with God, God promises you to give you those things. And so because the Bible has promised me that God will protect my daughter for, you know, if I am um, a faithful servant of him, if I ask for that, then I'm going to trust that he's going to deliver on that. And nobody can tell me that anything's impossible for God, but I wouldn't have gotten there if y'all didn't really force me to take a look at that statement. And like, like I said this and I want this, but how do I make this happen? Mm. And I can't, I can't make it happen by myself. Mm -hmm. I need God. And so that really forced me to take a look at that. And then I was like, all right, I can't drag my feet anymore. I got to ask God for that protection, especially, and then I'm looking at other things that are going on. I have a question for you. Yeah. So are you going like, based on what you're saying right now, are you going to still be a strict parent or since in the method you're saying right now, you're just going to let, you're going to be good to God, move your family like this, so you believe you should let your daughter or if you have a son or whatever, live a free life, you give them your rules, but not strict them because you know that guys can take them or you're still going to be strict on them. Because I know a lot of people that have really strict parents that are bad. And they're worse. You don't need to be strict when you raise your children to want to do the things that are good for them. You know what I mean? Okay. You don't need to be strict. Like, my mom didn't need to be strict about drug use when I was little, like smoking weed. She raised me in a way where the thought of smoking weed was not desirable at all. I just thought when you said that one thing about if you said your daughter wanted to go to the mall where her friends are eight, mm -hmm. like that no. So I'm thinking like she won't want to. She won't want. Okay. No, I don't believe like we've come to normalize certain kind of behaviors and desires, but these are these are they only want these things because they see their little friends doing it or they see it on TV. So how do you avoid that yeah. unless you just homeschool them? Right? Well, I'm homeschooling all oh, my you children. Are? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. they, they, oh, okay. Modern. Public school is an indoctrination camp for all kinds of bad and destructive ideas. What do they um, do for like social and public release? Church, having a big family, having friends. All my friends are having kids right now. My neighbor, who's a good friend now, he just had a kid. My, like I'm saying, I already got two. We're shooting for like five if God wills it. Yeah. So they'll have plenty of, you know, interaction and, um, you know, extracurricular activities and things of that nature. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but that's where my real friendships were born. They were born on sports. the playground and in sports. They weren't, you weren't allowed to talk in class. At least, not maybe it's not like that here in America, but in Jamaica, classroom is very strict. You cannot talk in class. So you don't make your friends in the classroom. You made them on the playground and after school playing sports, you know? So if I facilitate those environments, then she'll have her friends. And especially, you know, church and Sunday school and things of that nature. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're done. I'm going to have you came through, man. Definitely a lot of things. I've learned again. I, I, I appreciate the content that you produce as well, unlike a lot of people. Yeah, I, I definitely, I for sure appreciate it. I for sure appreciate it. Any, any final words for the, for the audience out there? Um. No, and thank you, bro. Unlike a lot of people, though. Wow. Oh, people. Every single time I bring up Young Don, it's like immediately like, oh, him? Oh, wow. I, and I, I don't know if that's just a me wow. thing. Ouch. I do it. I mean, so serious. Every single time. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, 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 brought, I brought it up to two oh, people in Discord and then somebody else on, on Twitter. Where I was like, yeah. we about to have Young Don. He was like, oh, are you sure? We get a podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. on Discord. I was like, what that's the fuck? Good. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's it, I understand. You know, Jesus says, you know, don't worry if the world hates you, they hated me first, yeah, you know? Nice. You know and so it's like, yeah, this is this is the reaction that is is to be expected. But yeah, um, one thing I can say, if you're, that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, any final message, words. Final words, hey, you know, um, read the Bible. Read the Bible, mm. 
Mm. Um, every one day we will all die and we were all created and our creator, you know, is going to judge us based on whether or not we upheld his law. And the only way to avoid punishment is to seek salvation um, through the son, which he sent Jesus Christ. That's, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Agent, any final words? Um, I can't say what I'm going to say because I'm going to leak a video. I'm not like you. I don't do that. No, I have no final words. <laughs> Jono? No. No final words, man. Yeah. Living it. Living life. Living life. If you guys want to see the background, the set, all the details, Caleb just recorded a fucking slap. We're on the Patreon, man. Five, so click five, that five. top link in the Super description. Peer to peer uncut, man. We went deep into detail, reaction, seeing it for the first time and all of that. Otherwise, we got Young Don's link in the description as well. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. peace.